I, the Dragon Overlord. Chapter 181, Coordinates of the Goddess of Night's Divine Kingdom. How did you know? Noella was slightly surprised. Creatures that had divinity might not necessarily be demigods. They could be just normal divine creatures. These creatures were not really immortal but were nevertheless superior to mortals. Divine creatures brought with them some extraordinary peculiarities. Only those with sufficient divinity could light up the divine fire and could be called demigods. The process of igniting the divine flame was no easy feat it was just like immortals and demons facing heavenly tribulations in a world of cultivation. Many divine creatures burned to nothing upon attempting to do so. After becoming a demigod, they would have to establish their church and faith. If this was in the past when the gods had a monopoly on the faith of the mortals, it would have been impossible to find a new source of faith. This was a big hurdle. A portion of those demigods would be like Louis who became the lord of a city. With their territory and people, they had a relatively easier time making believers. After becoming a demigod, those divine creatures would also need to form their divine authority. Divine authorities were not easy to choose. If they were careless and had the same divine authority as a powerful god, then the new gods would simply have an unbeatable enemy and would most likely die soon. As a result of this, only weaker divine authorities were chosen. With divine authority, they would have to condense their godhood. This was the foundation of a god that allowed them to be reborn. The moment any creature became a god would be their most vulnerable moment. Many gods had died during this stage after being killed. To continue on the path to becoming a god, they would have to have sufficient divine power and create their divine kingdom. Only when the divine kingdom is complete could one truly be called a god. On the path to becoming a god, a little bit of negligence would spell the end of the road. Noella carefully thought about it. She felt that she did not even leak out a single characteristic of a divine creature, so how did Louis notice it? Louis looked at her and calmly said, Your necromancy is very peculiar. It's unlike normal necromancy. There's a mysterious flavor mixed in it, so I thought, maybe you had the divinity of death to make your necromancy completely different. Hearing Louis's words, Noella was dazed, you actually tried out my magic. She could not believe it. In Noella's point of view, Louis was a demigod dragon, so it should be more accurate that he would look down on her magic. She simply never imagined that Louis would test her powers when he had taken it away from her and noticed the difference in it compared to normal necromancy. Louis saw Noella's expression and knew what she was thinking, but he did not try to explain himself. It was not like he could just tell her that he was a fake demigod. Her power was absolutely important to Louis in dealing with Earth. Your body was stolen, so you had also lost a large amount of power. I think you should not mind talking about what happened back then. For example, why did you choose to annihilate some countries? From my understanding of your life, you should have melded into human society to learn magic. You should be a well-hidden dragon, so why would do something that only a stupid dragon would do? Louis spoke slowly and gazed at Noella. This was something Louis had been curious about. This queen of calamity, after a moment of hesitation, felt that there was no longer any point in hiding those things. She had already lost a large portion of her powers. To put it bluntly, she could only rely on Louis. Support us at Hosted Novel. I can tell you a secret, a secret that will definitely satisfy you, but you must swear, swear that you will help me recover my body. I won't require you to find my body, but I need your help in one small matter. Noella's body twisted and turned into her human form. Louis looked closely and found that the human form of the Queen of Calamity was a rather mature and beautiful woman. She had long fiery hair and fiery red inverted pupils. She wore a dark red long skirt that trailed to the ground. Her dress tightly hugged her slender waist and bountiful breasts like a snake. Because the long skirt wrapped her body tightly, her snow-white breasts could be seen swaying with every step she took. Noella's entire appearance was incredibly seductive. The size of her breasts was enough to amaze people and could even be said to be a work of art. Her perfectly charming curves were extremely attractive whether to dragons or humans. All of which made Louis reveal a look of admiration. The Queen of Calamity did not mind Louis's disgusting gaze on her anymore. She only glared at him, waiting for him to pledge. While being a little pensive, Louis slowly said, I swear by my divine fire and the Styx River, if you provide me with information that could satisfy me, I will help you find your body. Hearing Louis's pledge, Noella was surprised and was even moved. This was because Louis made the Styx River Oath. This kind of oath was a binding oath for the gods. In the underworld, there was a river that flowed and is said to be the birth of the world. This place was the original birthplace of all life. 
Its name was the Styx River. Even gods who fell into the Styx River would be washed away by the river, reducing their divinities greatly. And if a demigod were to fall into it, it was equivalent to instantly turning from a demigod into a mortal. And Louis was a demigod who pledged the Styx River. This made it impossible for Noella to distrust him. But the Queen of Calamity did not notice Louis's hidden ploy. After all, he was not a demigod, nor had he ignited the divine fire. Even if he broke the oath, the river Styx could not do anything to him. Even if he ignites the divine fire in the future, Louis was not afraid, because the current oath wouldn't have any binding power in the future. But this oath had indeed fooled Noella, making her say anything she knew. A thousand three hundred years ago, I had met a demigod lich on my way to becoming a demigod. A demigod lich? When I first met you, you said that a demigod lich stole your body. Is that the same one? Louis asked. Yes. It's the same one. Who is that demigod lich? What's her name? I don't know. I didn't ask either. We just made a deal. Without waiting for Louis to continue questioning, Noella explained the whole deal. That demigod lich promised to give me a trace of ownerless divinity of death. As a price, I had to set off a grand massacre in the main continent. That's why you invaded several principalities and obtained the title destroyer of nations. Then, why did the demigod ask you to do that? I'm not sure. But it wasn't an equivalent exchange. Even if you want to become a demigod and desperately need this divinity, you shouldn't have agreed to the deal. You should know that if you create such a big disaster in the main continent, you will be hunted by many powerful people even if the gods weren't there. With your diligent character, I don't think you would have agreed to the deal. Louis thought for a moment and pointed out abnormal points. That's right. I wouldn't do something that risky for just a trace of the divinity of death, but the lich also added one more bargaining chip. Saying this, Noella stopped and smugly looked at Louis as if to say, Come, beg me to tell you what that bargaining chip is. Louis laughed lightly and felt that this female dragon was really childish. He decided to indulge her and spoke with an eager tone, then, what other bargaining chip did the lich use? Seeing Louis's eager expression, Noella was inwardly happy. She almost hummed after seeing this loathsome dragon's change in expression. She coughed and looked up and said word by word, she told me the coordinates of the divine kingdom of the goddess of night. After these words, Noella quickly looked at Louis. Sure enough, Louis's expression once again changed. This time, he was not pretending and was really shocked. Chapter 182 Absorbing the Goddess Divinity The Goddess of Night's Divine Kingdom When he heard this, Louis was excited beyond belief. If it was during the era when the gods sat exalted on their thrones, and when the stars shone in the sky, Louis would have felt that the divine kingdom of the goddess of the night was beyond his reach. After all, that was something he could not face in his current state. Let alone Louis, even the five-colored dragon god would not have a good time if it broke into the goddess of night's divine kingdom. As one of the most powerful gods of the world, she was a goddess who had existed since time immemorial. She was a goddess who was born at the birth of the world and possessed countless secrets. After many years, many gods had fallen and risen. The status of the goddess of night also ebbed and flowed, but she had never fallen. She was one of the rare gods who had lived since then till now. Even if the Terran civilization wanted to kill her, one of the strongest gods, they would have to pay a high price. It would be no different than facing the five-colored dragon god. But now, the gods had been sleeping for a long time and the stars had all dimmed. All the divine kingdoms had fallen from their places and even the connections between realms had become extremely thin. In such a case, knowing the coordinates of a fallen divine kingdom of a powerful god was good news. Even if the goddess of night's divine kingdom had fallen 30,000 years ago and probably had nothing inside, just going there would be able to bring some untold benefits. This is indeed a piece of news that satisfies me. Louis looked at Noella who was wearing a smug expression and nodded his head with pleasure. Since Noella told him this good news, then it meant that she would definitely tell him the coordinates without concealing anything. But before Louis could ask about it, Noella's next words made Louis change his expression again. After I learned the coordinates of the goddess of night's divine kingdom from the lich, I boldly went there once. There, I met the goddess of night. Saying this, Noella's expression also changed and fear flashed across her face. Even if she was a proud and haughty dragon, she had to show humility in front of a god, let alone one of the strongest gods. Unless Noella herself was at the level of an ancient dragon that could contend against demigods, she could only have a little bit of pride in front of a god. Naturally, becoming a god had always been Noella's goal, but she had never achieved it. Goddess of Night? 
you said you met the goddess of the night in her fallen divine kingdom? Louis unconsciously raised his voice. Previously, he had been detected by the prying eyes of the goddess of magic when he lit up the divine authority. Louis did not feel anything when it happened because he could sense that there was an extremely great distance between the goddess and himself. The distance was not a physical one, but an indescribable distant, mental one. He was sure that the goddess of magic was not in a normal state. She was like other gods who could not return to the main continent. But now, Noella said that she had met the goddess of night, which made Louis nervous. Are the gods returning? Or could the oldest and special gods have special means that allow them to briefly descend? No, if the goddess of night truly returned, then I wouldn't have felt that there was a far distance between me and the goddess of magic. Although the goddess of magic is not as old or mysterious as the goddess of night, the goddess of magic is no less powerful than her. If the goddess of night truly returned, then the goddess of magic could definitely do the same. I have too little information. I can only speculate when it comes to the secrets of the gods. Noella calmed down. She hesitated for a long time and continued, yes. I can be sure that it was her. Her lofty presence could not fool me, but the strange thing was that the goddess of night in front of me at that time was not strong. At that time, I was at the peak of my power. If my perception was correct, the goddess of night was just as strong as me at that time. Saying so, the female dragon actually blushed. She probably felt awkward comparing herself with the goddess of night. When Louis heard this, his eyes lit up. It was good if the goddess of night wasn't strong. If she was in her perfect state, then Louis would rather stay as far away as possible. This is indeed very strange. The goddess of night should have strong divine power. Even if it was only her avatar descending, it should still have at least half of her power which is at the demigod rank, not just the peak of legendary rank. Since you have met her, what did she say to you? Louis asked and looked at Noella, waiting for her to give more information. Noella shook her head, she did not say anything and only bestowed me her divinity of darkness. Without any hesitation, Noella opened her palm, causing an extremely dense black light to emerge. It contained an incredible property that was the manifestation of the divine. You did not absorb it? Louis could see that this divinity was not something squeezed out from Noella's own divinity. It was something that had always been there since the beginning, in other words, it had always been in Noella's hands, and she had no interest in using it. The goddess of night's reputation isn't very good. I don't dare use the divinity given to me for no reason. This is not a divinity of a fallen god, but a living god. Noella bragged by waving the divinity and threw it to Louis, if you want it, you can have it. You really are too cautious. You never thought of using this divinity at all even when you were in danger. If it wasn't because of the lich's bargain, you might not have lost power and nearly died. Louis could not help but praise. This female dragon was indeed a genius. If not for her bad luck, it should have been impossible for her to be this miserable. That's certainly true. I am the mighty Noella Nice Gain. It was just that I was too greedy at that time. I shouldn't have coveted the goddess of night's divine kingdom and the divinity of death. Noella smugly said then sighed with regret. Louis caught the divinity of the goddess of night in his palm. He was also a bit hesitant. Divinity was the thing he needed the most at the moment. The appearance of this divinity came just at the right time. But, just as Noella said, this was the divinity of a living god. Ordinary people would never touch it. Even demigods did not dare absorb it. Who knew if it was a trap from the goddess of night? After all, she was famed for her cunning. However, it wasn't impossible to take it. First of all, the goddess of night was in a state that could not return at the moment. On the other hand, powerful divinities facing off against each other would neutralize. Louis wasn't a normal dragon, but a dragon who possessed powerful divine power and the godhood of the dragon god. It's just a small amount of divinity, and the goddess of night is in a strange state. There is a huge possibility that I can purify it and turn it into my divinity. Louis thought so and made a decision. Under Noella's dumbfounded gaze, he took the divinity and began to absorb it. Chapter 183 Blasphemy Against the Goddess Noella looked at Louis in shock. She watched him swallow the divinity of the goddess of night without any hesitation. She could not understand what Louis had done, and even momentarily thought that he had gone crazy. Gods and even demigods wouldn't reject divinity, but swallowing the divinity of the goddess of night without thinking was simply the same as suicide. The biggest problem was that the goddess of night was still alive and was one of the most powerful gods of this world. If the goddess of night had fallen, then this behavior would be acceptable, 
but swallowing the divinity of a living god was the same as drinking poison. Had Louis truly gone crazy? Of course not. It was because he had a guarantee that he dared to do this. For the current Louis, he cared the most about two things. The first was to establish a church to collect faith, and the other was to find a way to ignite his divine fire. Louis had already made enough preparations to establish his church, but divinity on the other hand was not easy to obtain. If an ordinary creature could find divinity by the roadside, then its luck was definitely out of the ordinary. The gods indeed had a lot of divinity on them, but taking theirs was simply blasphemous and as difficult as scaling the heavens. Moreover, it would probably be very hard to find the gods in the current era. So with the divinity of the goddess of night in front of him was something he must have. Although there was another divinity of death inside Noella, he felt that it was not worth it to kill this female dragon just to obtain it. There was still a huge role for Noella to play, but if there was something that could allow Louis to directly become a god on the female dragon's body, then he would not hesitate to play a deadly hand. After absorbing the divinity of the goddess of night into his own godhood, the divinity of the goddess was directly purified with almost no resistance. Having the godhood of the former dragon god, the creator of all dragons, and the highest god of the world, Louis was able to instantly erase the small amount of will inside the divinity and turn it into a masterless object. With the divinity becoming masterless, Louis absorbed it without any hesitation. With the infusion of divinity into his body and soul, he could feel that his entirety was being sublimated. It was as if the old graphics card he was using was upgraded to the latest GTX 3080T. Although the operating speed of the computer was still far inferior to that of a supercomputer, there was still a huge qualitative change. At this moment, Louis had completed another step towards becoming a god. He had completely changed from a mortal creature to a divine creature. As the divinity completely merged with him, his perception of faith becomes more accurate and powerful. Divinity was like the wiring he needed to connect the godhood and the faith he was gathering. In the past, Louis lacked divinity, so even if people were devoting their faith to him, he wasn't able to convert it to divine power immediately. Now that he had divinity, he could feel the power of faith injecting directly into the godhood without any lag. As the godhood of a former paramount deity, it converted faith into divine power at a speed beyond imaginable. It was to the point that the conversion rate was one point of faith to one point of divine power. It's just that he did not possess a lot of divinity, making the charge speed too slow. Moreover, the amount of faith that he was receiving wasn't enough. It currently amounted to a squeeze of divine power. But Louis felt that that was enough at the moment. In the past, he could not replenish his divine power and he had used up a lot when he made his performance on earth, and now he had a way to replenish it. It didn't matter to him how slow it was. Time was meaningless towards gods and it was in fact something to be wasted. For mortals, revenge had to be done in ten years, but for gods, even a thousand years was not too late. Support us at Hosted Novel. Moreover, it was only slow at the moment. With the increase in sources of faith and the collection of more divinity, then the rate of replenishment would become a lot faster. The goddess of the night had not yet fallen, so forcibly erasing her will was a great blasphemy. It is equivalent to going against the goddess. I just hope that she won't be too angry. Louis did not really care at all even if he thought this. If it was during the period when the gods were high and mighty, the goddess of night might directly knock on his door and kill him in retaliation. But there was no better time than the present if he wanted to blaspheme against a god. He might not even have such an opportunity in the future. Louis was thinking of how he could perform more blasphemies against the goddess. In any case, Louis's goal was to become the new dragon god. If he failed, he would die regardless. If he succeeded, then the goddess of night would not be able to do anything, so Louis had become fearless. Why you alright? Noella asked. She looked at Louis and watched his hardened expression that was like those bullheaded dragons. She wanted to find her body back at the moment and needed to rely on Louis's power. The other party had even pledged an oath. If something happened to Louis, Noella wouldn't even know where to cry to. What could happen to me? I am quite comfortable right now. Louis stretched his back and let out a comfortable groan. After becoming a divine creature, there were no earth-shattering changes. This world wasn't a world of immortal cultivation, so there wouldn't really be that much change. Compared to before, Louis now let out a tiny bit of godly aura. But because he had always pretended to be a demigod dragon without any godly aura, he had to continue hiding it. But Louis himself felt very comfortable in this situation. For him, this change was a qualitative change. 
It did not increase his strength substantially but increased his essence. It was as if he had transcended and taken a giant leap towards becoming a god. Call Cisna, marches, and the rest. Louis shouted loudly. As his words fell, everyone inside the cathedral, whether the elven maids or the soldiers guarding outside, knew that their great lord had woken up again. Chapter 184 Establishment of the Dragon God Church When Cisna, Marches, Clooney, and Lisfer arrived at the cathedral, Louis had already been waiting in the back hall for a long time. A huge more than 40-meter-long shadow dragon was lying on the ground beside them. Its inverted pupils tracked the visitors with a great sense of oppression. The four people who came were being careful not to look at the dragon, especially when they knew of her reputation. Other than demigods and gods, no one would dare fight against the Queen of Calamity. Cisna and Lisper, who had followed Louis to the Shadow Realm witnessed him capture the Queen of Calamity using strength and wisdom. Now, seeing the dragon honestly lie down on the ground while Louis sat on his back in his human form, they were both shocked. They did not expect the Queen of Calamity to submit to Louis so easily. Leaving aside her pride as a dragon, the Queen of Calamity was a legendary rank mage, and in their opinion, making her submit was an impossible task. If Noella had known what the two were thinking, she would have scoffed. In Noella's point of view, she and Louis were just in a cooperative relationship. Once he helped her find her body and regain her strength according to the oath, she would immediately bid goodbye to this place. She wasn't willing to stay at all. As for Louis's behavior of riding on her body, Noella did not care. If other races were to do the same thing, she would definitely kill them as this was the same as insulting dragons. If the one on top was a dragon at the demigod rank or an ancient dragon, then Noella could not keep her pride up. But Noella was also a little uncomfortable. This was because generally speaking, a male dragon riding on a female dragon would be an instance of mating. Louis was about to say something when the four people entered, but he noticed that something was wrong and looked at Clooney with surprise. This young man was captured by him when he conquered Dragon City. He used to be a believer in the Goddess of Mourning. Because his faith in the Goddess wasn't deep, and because of his talents, the slain theocracy taught him many ways to spread the name of God. With this talent, Louis took him in and made use of him to spread propaganda and political brainwashing inside Dragon City. This young man probably had a demonic level of talent in spreading propaganda. He was able to accomplish his tasks well and learned modern propaganda methods like a sponge. Slowly, he was able to capture a high position in Dragon City to the point that Louis would include him in a meeting of the people with the highest position in the city. What truly surprised Louis was that he could feel Clooney devote some faith to him. Clooney was not just a potential believer but became a true believer. He could even become one of his clergies. When a believer reaches this level of belief in a god, it was difficult to change their faith unless the god had fallen and was replaced by other gods. Previously, Louis did not have any divinity, preventing him from completely absorbing faith into divine power, so he did not notice this. After becoming a divine creature, Louis also gained some basic abilities of a god. For example, he could see a thread of faith that continued into the void. In Dragon City, there was also the same line of faith coming from the people. These lines of faith converge in Louis's godhood and transform into divine power. This was the source of a god's power and at the same time, their greatest poison. And the line of faith coming from Clooney was the very thick kind, which means that his faith was real. In the eyes of gods, the degree of a follower's belief could never be hidden. Clooney felt apprehensive, wondering why the great lord was gazing at him like this. In the beginning, when Clooney was captured by Louis, he thought that would be killed but he did not expect the great dragon to give him a chance to live after seeing his abilities. We are hosted novel, find us on Google. At that time, Clooney's survival instincts as a human being made him frantically display his self-worth. He prayed day and night to Louis as if he was praying to the gods. Slowly, when his position grew higher and became famous, when he saw the changes to Dragon City, when he got to enjoy food that only nobles could enjoy, the more he believed in Louis. Unknowingly, he had become one of Louis's believers. If Louis was already a god in this era where the other gods had weaker presences, Clooney would have already become Louis's priest and be able to exercise the divine magic that he bestows. Just as Clooney was frightened, wondering if he had offended the great lord, Louis nodded to him and said, Very good, Minister Clooney. I am satisfied with your attitude. Following Louis's words, Clooney relaxed as all tension left his body. The sudden relaxation gave him a joyful feeling, the joy of being praised by the god he believed in. 
I was thinking of someone who could take on such a heavy responsibility, but after seeing you, I have already made my choice. Lisfer and Marches were in a master-slave contract with him, so Louis could trust them. The two of them also had a faint line of faith going towards him. Only Cisna did not have any faith going towards Louis. This must be because of her faith in Lady Silver Moon. Louis felt that this was normal. Cisna had lived in the elven country for more than a thousand years. Under the influence of the Queen of Elves, her faith towards the Silver Moon goddess was very firm. Making her change her faith was definitely going to be difficult. Louis could only start with those normal elves who were living in Dragon City, as they seemed to have a higher chance of changing the object of their faith. Previously, Louis was still pondering on who to assign in building the church. This was a very important task. In order to become a god, the importance of a church was self-evident to the point that Louis regarded it with utmost importance. This also meant that whoever wielded the power of the church would become the most powerful person in Dragon City. The person who could build him a church should be loyal and capable enough. Marches was a mage who created magic positions. He was barely able to manage the city let alone such an important thing as his church. Lisper was a beast man who was more focused on fighting. Although she could think better than most beast men due to her chief training, she was far from qualified. This was because building a church and building the territory were two different things. However, Clooney came in as a pleasant surprise. The young man was a genius at spreading propaganda. The slain theocracy was probably interested in his ability so they stationed him at the original central city and turned him into the archbishop's right-hand man. This was considered a huge bargain for Louis. This person, whose talents were chosen by the theocracy, had now become one of his believers. Although there was still the possibility of betrayal, he was now a true believer, so only an evil god or stronger temptations could sway him. As long as Louis kept his eye on him, the possibility of him turning against him was small. And the more Clooney's faith developed, the more impossible it was for him to betray. With this in mind, Louis's tone became much milder, saying, Clooney, I will give you a major task. This will bring you great glory. Clooney respectfully bowed his head and said, Please speak, my lord. Clooney's heart leaped and already guessed what he was going to be assigned to. From today on, you will build my church. If you do good enough, you can become the future pope. Louis's every word made Clooney's heart jump. He licked his lips with excitement and spoke with desire and fervor for the future, my lord, I wonder what kind of church you will establish? The name of the church generally represents the most fundamental power of a god. It is also the name that the gods leave to the world. Under the urging of the Queen of Calamity, Louis slowly spoke, the Dragon God Church. Chapter 185 Establishing the Mage Corps He really wants to obtain the Dragon God's divine authority. Noella's body trembled and her expression changed slightly. With the name of the church that Louis had chosen, it was easy to guess what his intentions were. Since the fall of the five-colored dragon god, the creator of all dragons and the father of all dragons, many dragons had lost their faith. Although countless dragons had tried to take over the position in the following 10,000 years, none had managed to succeed. 30,000 years had passed since the era of disaster. Dragons of this era had now become accustomed to this kind of faithless lifestyle. Most were even unwilling to have another dragon god and desired to stay free. Noella knew that any dragon who attempted to become the dragon god would become the public enemy of the entire dragon race. In these 30,000 years where the gods and their miracles were absent, the faith of all beings had been at its lowest. Even in human kingdoms, with the exception of the theocracy, all other countries had been ruled by kings and not the pope. As long as the gods could not manifest their greatness and could not show their miracles, obtaining pure faith was nightmarishly difficult. For example, the dragons of the world thought that the gods were beings who tried to enslave them. This was why they didn't want the dragon god to reappear. This was why Noella thought that her fellow dragons were very stupid. It was because they couldn't see the situation, the trend, and understand the existence of gods. Once the gods returned and the dragons didn't have their own god, at that point, they would truly become slaves. Louis, who was sitting on the back of the Queen of Calamity, noticed that this female dragon was trembling and asked, Noella, what are you thinking about? Noella thought about it and felt that the two of them were currently allies. In order to let this ally pay more attention to her, she let out her thoughts. After hearing Noella's words and understanding the current situation of the dragon race, Louis pondered for a long time and sighed, 30,000 years can actually make the dragons forget the glory of gods. They have misunderstood the relationship between the gods and the believers. 
This is really lamentable. Louis did not expect Sans Soleil to be like this. With the disappearance of the gods, the culture of the world had regressed this much. From the intelligent brain, Louis had learned that Sans Soleil was a world where the gods battled before the Terran civilization invaded. In that era, no creature did not believe in God. But today, a good chunk of the population did not have any real faith. This novel is available on Hosted Novel. But this was also understandable. The gods had to prove their existence, bestow blessings on their believers, and collect their faith. If they couldn't do any of these, they could only eke out shallow existences and enjoy shallow patronage similar to the gods of earth. This was because all creatures were selfish. If they couldn't gain any benefits in believing, then who would do so? Dragons are truly stupid. Noella did not mince her words and spat out her contempt, that said, there are ones that are knowledgeable. Ho! Oh, and which dragons are worthy of attention? Louis asked with interest, while he did not forget to explain, I recently returned to the main continent. Before that, I drifted in the distant stars for the past 30,000 years. I have little understanding of the current situation of the dragons. Louis knew that Noella was half-step into the realm of the demigods a thousand years ago. She must know a lot of secrets about the dragons. As for the difference between a thousand years ago and now, Louis was not worried. A thousand years for humans would cause many changes, but a thousand years for dragons would mean nothing significant. Cisna and the others listened with interest. Dragons were powerful, but they were rarely seen in public. So they were also quite interested. The current dragon kingdom's mithril king and her rival, the self-proclaimed black dragon prince or obsidian king are dragons secretly trying to gather believers. One of them believes that dragons should come into contact with other races and treat mortals with kindness. The other believes that dragons should use their powers to gain more power and fortune over other races. If we look at it from a perspective before the era of disaster, one of them belonged to the good and the other to the evil. Noella did not feel that this kind of thing was a secret and could be said as common knowledge among dragons. So she directly told Louis about the intent of the two dragons. So, it's the Mithril King and the Obsidian King. I hope both of you won't stand in my way of becoming the dragon god, otherwise, I will have to get rid of you both. Naturally, if you submit to me and respect me, I wouldn't mind letting you both become my subordinates once I become a god. Louis narrowed his eyes and thought. However, he had never seen the two dragons before, so it wasn't good to count his chickens at this stage. He could only put matters aside for now. Marches. Louis called out to Marches. He pointed at the back and asked, Do you see these? Marches nodded like a chicken pecking rice. He naturally saw what Louis was pointing at. This was the first thing he noticed when he arrived, a mountain of wasabi. Oh god of magic, there are so many materials for making potions. If any other mage knew that the lord has this much raw material, their eyes would probably go red with greed. Thinking so, Marches also felt a bit of toothache. Having too much wealth would make other people covet it. Their great lord was simply too fabulously wealthy. What about the basic education that I assigned to you earlier? My lord, I have had all the people of Dragon City who are at the right age be given basic education. Although they are still far from grasping anything, they can already recognize some words. Marches replied respectfully. He was shocked by Louis's whimsical approach to basic national education. This could only be done thanks to the city lord of Dragon City. Only when food and clothing were solved could basic education be implemented for the citizens. If they couldn't even eat, no one would care about learning anything. If they learned a few words in the day, they would have already starved to death at night. This was why education was only in the hands of the nobility. Then the next task I will give you will be important. Refine these materials into magic potions. Train a batch of people at the right age to become mages. I do not require them to learn powerful magic nor do I require them to use many spells. As long as they can learn, create stone, and, create cement, that would be enough. If they can't even learn these two spells, then let them go back to farming. Understand? Louis said in a deep voice. For Louis, he did not need these mages to be incorporated into the fighting force yet. As long as they could master two spells, it would be enough. If many mages could just learn these two spells, Louis's next step of advancing infrastructures would open up. The construction of Dragon City could then begin. Chapter 186 The Lord's Decision At the moment, no one aside from Louis and March knew that a substitute for the raw materials used in the magic potion had been found. This would quickly change, however. 
Once large numbers of mages started to be produced, many would surmise that he had a way to provide many foundational magic potions. However, Louis did not care at all. Although the saying went that a man's wealth leads to his ruin, Louis was a powerful demigod dragon. Few would dare to covet his wealth. After instructing Marches and Clooney, Louis turned to Lisfer. The wolf girl knew that Louis had something for her to do, so she bowed to show respect with a wild and prideful smile. After living in Dragon City for several months, Lisfer and the other beast men had become used to the palace. The old, the weak, and the children were doing simple tasks every day. The warriors on the other hand were living a completely militaristic life. Dragon City had taken very good care of its soldiers. They got to eat their fill every day. Asides from the exquisitely refined wheat, they occasionally got their hands on meat as well. When they were not eating or fighting, they were training. In short, they were living the dream life. As the ban on trade in Dragon City gradually lifted, several bold merchants came to the city and brought in the specialties of their regions. After eating and drinking, people would naturally pursue more high-end things, and so Louis had set forth the precedent that labor food. In the future, he would hammer down this point even more strongly. Louis pointed at another batch of supplies and said, Lisfer, take a look at these metals. In terms of production, China was the number one producer of steel, but because of large supply and low demand, a lot of steel simply could not be sold. Since Louis needed steel, the Chinese government had given him a batch. In any case, the amount given to him was only a single hair from the back of an ox. In modern society, steel was used for infrastructure. Naturally, a lot would be consumed. That said, Louis did not obtain them to modernize the world's infrastructure. He wanted the steel to upgrade the soldiers' weapons. He even wanted to create full-body equipment for each person. Lisfer had already seen the metal when he entered. For a warrior, good weapons and defensive equipment were the most important thing. After obtaining Louis's permission, she quickly approached the steel and knocked her fingers on it, but the joy on her face just disappeared. What? Is this batch of metal not qualified? Louis frowned. It was possible that in this world, the common steel used might have special properties that its version on earth lacked. No, it's not unsuitable, my lord. The materials used in this batch of steel are very good. In terms of basic quality, even the equipment of the human empire's elite heavy infantry cannot match, the only difference is the enhancement from craftsmen. Lisfer said in a hurry, the material is just too good and there aren't many smiths in Dragon City that could process this level of materials. The difficulty is so high that I'm afraid only the dwarves could work with it. Support us at Hosted Novel. Because of the backwardness of civilization, the people's forging ability was also insufficient. In the face of modern materials, ordinary flames could not melt them and would probably require magic. As Lisfer said, only dwarves who were used to forging various weapons could do it. Wanting to forge these steel into weapons and defensive equipment is not impossible, but with human technology, it would take a long time, especially the defensive gear. Lisfer further supplied. Louis pondered a little and decided, first, gather all the smiths in Dragon City. Then, determine their monthly salary and wages depending on their skill level. This should stimulate their competitiveness. Then we let them forge weapons first. It doesn't matter how long it would take as long as we upgrade the soldiers' weapons first. Defensive equipment was more delicate compared to weapons. Without the right forging ability, the smiths in Dragon City would not be able to finish fast enough. Weapons were better. For example, the beast men preferred rugged weapons, so the sharpness could be ignored. Making them solid and heavy should be enough. With a single smash, the beast men should be able to ignore enemy armor and smash through their opponent's liver and guts. Is there a dwarven tribe nearby? The dwarves were a good race comprised mostly of smiths. In the near recent century, the slain theocracy explored the San Soliel mountain range. In the depth, there is an existence of dwarven tribes, but because those dwarves were located deep inside the mountains and posed no threat to Dragon City, the theocracy had always ignored them. Clooney rushed forward to speak. As someone who was formerly from the theocracy, he had seen many documents of the original central city, its situation as well as the situation in its vicinity. No matter what was said, the theocracy had operated the city for more than a hundred years already. Very good, Clooney. Tell Lisfer about the detailed report later. Lisfer, send some scouts to search the mountains according to Clooney's information and find traces of those dwarves. Louis gave his orders. Lisfer's eyes were glittering with excitement and bloodlust. 
The meaning behind Louis's orders was simple, collect information, capture the dwarves, and enslave them for their use. As for Louis's behavior being cruel for attacking the dwarves who did not provoke him, no one would criticize him at all in this world rife with wars. Internal wars would probably require reason and excuse, then interracial wars only needed one side to dislike the other. After Louis gave his orders on the future development of Dragon City, Cisna stepped forward, my lord, a representative from the Adventurer's Guild wishes to have an audience with you. We didn't wish to disturb you before because you were asleep. Although she said he was in a deep sleep, Cisna was aware that the Lord had probably traveled to the unknown realm that only he was aware of again. That was also why there was another huge supply of materials inside the hall. Although Dragon City was only a city, the city lord's provision of supplies made its supply deposits equivalent to that of a principality. Adventurer's Guild? Hmm, you can let them come meet me. Louis nodded his head and agreed with the audience. Cisna, you stay. I have something to say to you. The rest of you can go and work on the tasks I have given you. Let Dragon City grow better and better and attract more talents. I hope that you can accomplish your tasks well. Louis looked deeply into his subject's eyes and spoke with a heavy tone. He did not need wastrels. He needed talents that could help him. Beauty was worthless to Louis. They were only decorations or toys for him. If they truly wanted his respect, they needed to show their ability. Everyone seemed to be lost in thought as they retreated to the place. Now, only Louis, Cisna, and the Queen of Calamity remained in the room. When talking about important matters, even those elven maids were not allowed to stay. Chapter 187 Grudges of the Gods Yes, my lord. What might I do for you? Cisna gave a slight bow with her hand over her chest. She raised her emerald pupils and stared at Louis with a trace of tension. In human form, Louis would be described as extremely handsome by human standards. Perhaps some might even classify him as being preternaturally so. That said, his appearance could not move this legendary ranger's heart. Elves were the most beautiful race in the world. Although they were also fond of beauty and appraised others' looks, that behavior was often restricted to outsiders. She would be lying if she said she did not feel the slightest bit of tension from his gaze. Dragons had a reputation for licentiousness, and she knew it wouldn't be strange for him to have certain thoughts towards her. Louis paid little heed to her flustered demeanor and spoke, I will tell you the coordinates of the goddess of night's divine kingdom. At this, the elven ranger stood erect, are your words true, my lord? Immediately afterward she paled at her wording and rephrased, forgive me, my lord. I did not mean to question your intent. It is only that this information is extremely shocking. Louis dismissed her behavior with a wave, no matter. You are forgiven. After all, even he had been shocked beyond compare when he heard the news. My lord, why are you telling me this? Cisna thoughtfully asked, as if she had guessed Louis's thoughts, and her guess was immediately confirmed by Louis's answer. I need you to pass this information to your queen. I want to see what she thinks of it. This was the decision Louis made after careful consideration. It was simply too dangerous to explore the goddess of night's divine kingdom alone. Let alone the possibility of encountering the goddess, the kingdom itself was in an unknown state, so Louis did not want to take the risk. This was not something he could solely rely on the godhood to deal with. Divine power might be able to deal with legendary rank powerhouses easily, but the goddess of night herself was a powerful god. Even with the godhood of the five-colored dragon god, he did not obtain any advantages from it, and might even overexpose himself. However, the goddess of night's divine kingdom was too enticing. It would be fine if he did not know where it was, but now that he knew, how could just ignore it and let the information rot? This novel is available on Hosted Novel. Thus, Louis needed an ally who could explore the Divine Kingdom with him. They would also need to be a demigod as legendary rank powerhouses were not enough. The only other demigod that Louis knew was the Queen of the Elves. Louis had spent much of his recent time learning the history of Sans Soleil. Though much of what occurred before the era of disaster was lost to the annals of history, everything that happened afterward was well accounted for. From his efforts, he had learned that the elven queen was the oldest living demigod in San Soliel. The queen had appeared just after the era of disaster came to an end. In fact, some suspected that she lived through that chaotic period. Consequently many were confident that she knew many secrets. By pulling her into this matter, Louis could obtain some of her knowledge. Louis was not afraid that the elven queen would refuse. The goddess of night and the goddess silver moon were enemies. The goddess of night was the eternal darkness while the goddess Silver Moon was the light in the eternal darkness. 
these made them completely at odds with each other. Thanks to some ancient records, Louis knew that the goddess of night and the goddess Silver Moon were sisters. They were born when the world was created and was part of the oldest gods. At first, the goddess Silver Moon was the goddess of light, but for some reason, her divine authority had changed into the Silver Moon, and she became the main god of the elves. In any case, the goddess of night and goddess Silver Moon were hostile with each other. Thus, the elven queen who devoted herself to goddess Silver Moon would certainly be willing to go together with Louis after hearing information on the goddess of night's divine kingdom. Cisna understood exactly what Louis was thinking. As a general raised by the elven queen, she naturally held hostile feelings to the enemy of the goddess she believed in. Please don't worry, my lord. I will personally deliver this message to Her Majesty as soon as possible. I'm sure that Her Majesty would also give you a quick answer. Cisna replied with a solemn face, thank you for giving us this information. We will definitely repay you with friendship and talents. I am not in a hurry. Even if the divine kingdom of the goddess of night has fallen for more than 30,000 years, there may be hidden dangers. Although I am not a god and barely just a demigod, we can carefully approach this matter. Louis spoke quite calmly. In truth, changing his perspective of time from a human scale to a dragon's was not very easy. It would take a while for him to truly adapt to the idea. For example, the statement an inch of time is an inch of gold was already a joke to him. After making this decision, Louis and Cisna stopped talking about this matter. In the matter related to gods, Cisna could not make a decision and had to ask her queen about how to proceed. My lord, winter is coming. Cisna thought about it. In her opinion, Louis was different from other dragons and was definitely a qualified lord, but at the same time, Louis was a demigod who might fail to notice the smallest of mortal problems. Dragon City is close to the south, but because of the geographic location of this place, winter is especially cold. The coldness might be a small matter to you, but for mortals, it is a matter of life and death. If we do not prepare in advance, we will likely suffer unnecessary losses. She tried to remain polite toward Louis, hoping he would pay attention to the issues of the livelihood of mortals. It seems that you did not notice the details when I was replanning Dragon City. I apologize, my lord. I'm somewhat unable to understand what you mean. Cisna was dumbfounded. Her ears twitched in confusion. Come with me. Let me explain things to you. Louis mysteriously smiled. He flew down from Noella's body and came in front of the elven ranger. Under Cisna's embarrassment and shyness, he took her small snow-white hands and led her outside to take a walk. Chapter 188 A Desert of Magic after passing by the noble district, Louis and Cisna arrived in front of two newly built houses. From the designs, he could tell that they were among the selected houses that were rebuilt according to his instructions. The owner of the house was a young man in his twenties. Although he had never seen Louis in his human form, he knew Cisna as one of the celebrities of Dragon City. Beautiful elves were already sought after by everyone, let alone Cisna who was probably one of the top beauties among them. Even if they knew that there was an unbridgeable gap between them, men would always have unrealistic expectations and long for the cold and awe-inspiring elven ranger. After seeing Cisna standing respectfully behind a young devilishly handsome man, the resident could faintly guess Louis's identity. He carefully welcomed the two into his home. For the city lord and lady Cisna to enter his humble home, this resident felt that it was the greatest honor in his entire life. Louis did not let out any excessive arrogance towards his own people. He did not need to pretend to be arrogant in front of mortals. The residents who lived close to the noble district were those that had made contributions to the city. He just slightly nodded at the nervous you man and brought Cisna to a brick construct. Eh? You actually have coal here? Cisna's eyes moved to the corner of the room and noticed a pile of coal. The resident hurriedly said, Milady, the lord had ordered every family to store coal. We didn't dare disobey the city lord's orders, so every family collected some. This young man knew how to read the mood. Since Louis did not disclose his identity, he did not point it out. As for why their lord had turned into a human, he thought that it must be one of those magical abilities of a dragon. After all, they were mysterious creatures. Very good. I like people who can listen to orders. Louis gladly said. Even if there wasn't any punishment for his orders, the resident still obeyed them. This meant that his prestige among the people had already reached an incredible level. Even if his orders were strange, the residents would still obey his orders. Are you planning to have them burn these? Cisna immediately guessed Louis's thoughts and raised her eyebrows skeptically. That's right. 
I had the people explore every inch of the city and found that there was a large coal mine on the north side. The place is very easy to mine. The San Soliel mountain range is really rich in resources, said Louis. But these things called coal will produce poisonous gas when burned. If the poisoned person does not see a doctor or priest immediately, they will die. Coals are normally used by dwarves in the forge, Cisna argued. I know what you are thinking Cisna and I have long considered this. Coal burning caused carbon monoxide poisoning, but Louis did explain in detail. In any case, Cisna did not understand science. Coals burn faster than firewood, and you, elves are a race that loves nature. Hearing Louis's words, Cisna was flattered and said, I can't thank you enough for thinking of us, but we elves are not unadaptable. Except for some druids, we do not mind if other races cut wood and dry them for heating. Even elves sometimes use firewood. Louis raised his hands to stop Cisna from continuing. Instead, he approached the brick structure and said, This is a heatable brick bed. If you burn coal in it, the coal would produce heat. If you look inside it, you can see an exhaust that would discharge the poisonous gas outside. The entire thing is covered in bricks and smoothed with cement. By placing a mat on top, the heat will pass through and warm the person on it. You, go call the people who are still at home. Then tell them to throw the coal and light it. Louis casually commanded the young man. The young man moved quickly to call his neighbors. Some men and women in simple shabby outfits came into the house and threw the coals inside the brick bed and lit the fire under Louis's watchful eyes. The fire is burning slowly. Louis frowned. He was dissatisfied with the speed at which the coal burned. He used his hand and cast a spell, causing the fire to spread. The citizens of Dragon City showed fear and reverence. They trembled at the mysterious magical abilities of their lord and felt fear. As the coal burned, Cisna could see that the poisonous gases were indeed being sent out through the exhaust just as Louis said. The house also gradually warmed up. Sit down for a try. Louis grabbed Cisna's delicate jade-like arm. Sitting on top of the brick bed, Cisna's face was full of surprise. She revealed a look of joy and opened her mouth as she faintly whispered, so comfortable. As her expression became slack, the citizens, regardless of gender, all looked down and blushed. It turns out that you have long planned ahead on how to deal with the cold winter and created such a magical thing. Cisna looked at Louis with admiration. She admired Louis's wisdom of thinking of a way for the people to cope with the long cold winter in advance. It also showed that Louis was paying attention to the people. You really have the wisdom of a hundred dragons. Cisna sighed in awe. She was thoroughly convinced and developed a heartfelt admiration. Louis's original city design seemed incredible to Cisna. She never would have thought that there were such hidden secrets in the design. Perhaps there were many other things about the design that she did not know of. Praise the dragon, this is amazing. The house has become warm all of a sudden. And I was wondering what the use of the strange bed was. It turns out to be for winter. The city lord is really as great as a god. The citizens of Dragon City looked at Louis with admiration. They whispered about Louis's wisdom that could even cause the beautiful Cisna to slacken. There were even people whispering a prayer to Louis, allowing him to gather faith. This is just a minor thing that's not worth mentioning. Louis casually waved his hand since this was just a borrowed idea. Search hosted novel for the original. However, Louis did not blush at all as he accepted the residents' worship. Do you all know how to use it now? He looked at the residents. Yes, my lord. Very good. Then I will give you all a task. Teach everyone you know how to use the heatable brick bed. By the time winter comes, I hope everyone knows how to use it. Yes, my lord. Everyone knelt down respectfully. The cold inside the house had been solved, but everyone will need winter clothes to go out. It's too late to make a large amount of winter clothing right now. It seems we might need to trade with other countries to make up the deficit. Louis murmured. Then as if he suddenly thought of something, he asked, Cisna, is there any news on the black? sticky liquid that I asked you to look for? Apologize, my lord. I have never heard of that liquid before. Even after searching through the Elven Royal Library, I found nothing. In other words, it does not exist? Perhaps it does not exist in the main continent. As for other realms, I don't know. Cisna said awkwardly. It's good that it doesn't exist. Louis muttered words that Cisna could not understand. What he asked Cisna to find was naturally oil. Since oil did not exist in the world, it meant that Sansoliel would not be able to use the same technology as Earth. The most famous development of technology was the creation of the steam engine, and oil was one of the most important components that could allow it to move. 
naturally, there might be some alternative in this world that Louis did not know yet. But Louis believed that Earth was a desert of magic while San Soliel was a desert of technology. Chapter 189, Dragon City, Capital of Adventurers Louis walked back to the noble district with Cisna and approached the Cathedral Palace. Dragon City's location meant that its residents lived in concentric circles down the slopes. The closer one was to the top, the greater their status. While Louis would not implement any policy as radical as equality for all, he wanted the citizens to feel that they could decide their own living standards with their own hands to an extent. We are hosted novel, find us on Google. As to whether this development would create a strict class hierarchy and bring corruption and decay, Louis did not need to consider it at the moment. This is truly a magnificent city, my lord. Cisna stood close to the fence atop the peak that overlooked the entire dragon city. At the foot were layers of densely packed houses. Further away were endless open fields. Behind everything was San Soliel Mountain Range, blowing refreshing air towards the city. The scene brought a sense of pride inside of Cisna. I could feel the city thriving and full of enthusiasm and energy. I can see that even if the inhabitants were thinly dressed, they are smiling and hopeful for the future. I have been to some human countries, and I've also been to the capital of the Sibylla Empire, but even the capital of the empire is only as vibrant as its developed markets. In many dark corners of the city, people live in dark corners without any expectations of the future. You are perhaps creating one of the most enchanting cities in the main continent. It is unprecedented for the ruler to think of the happiness of the people. Cisna gazed at the busy city beneath her feet and admired it from the bottom of her heart. Dragon City had been open to the public after the construction of the basic infrastructures in Louis's plan. Moreover, it was open to all races, making it common to see the occasional caravans of humans, beast men, and even halflings in the city. But a city ruled by a dragon still made people hesitate. Not all caravans dared to approach the city. The first merchants who approached were those who were bold and daring. Once they returned to their countries and spread the word to other merchants, they would all begin flocking to the city. Dragon City was rich in products, but there were no specialty items. Because of frequent wars and problems with the land, it was not suitable for agriculture. It was more suitable for animal husbandry, but that would not be enough to meet the daily diet of the population. Otherwise, nomads would not have to go plunder and steal. However, the location of Dragon City also gave it great advantages. It was almost at the center of the continent and had access to all other kingdoms in every direction. As a result, Louis had planned for it to be a transit city. He would rely on taxation and trading as a way to develop the economy. Louis knew that he was only relying on Earth's food resources to fulfill the needs of the citizens. He also understood that it was impossible for the city to be self-sufficient, but Louis already had plans to deal with this. I'm just building the city the way I want it. I don't expect everyone to be like a dragon. That is simply a pipe dream. All I ask is for the people to be able to live a full and warm life. Louis said so as he looked at the distant city gate where some merchants were reluctant to leave. Anyone who came into Dragon City had the same benefits as its residents. They could obtain daily food stamps to exchange for a certain amount of refined wheat. If they wanted to buy it, they would have to pay more than the citizens. Even so, other cities lacked the supply causing the prices to go a few times the price in Dragon City. To be able to use a certain amount of money in Dragon City to live like the nobility was already seen as a luxury by these merchants. However, the caravans coming to Dragon City could not stay for long. They had to go to other countries to sell goods in order to leave, so they could only go in regret. Some people had even asked how they could become citizens, but as Louis had just finished the basic planning and construction of the city, he began to strictly control the population. This world was closer to the medieval era, making it impossible to have a city that reached 10 million people. As a result, Louis wanted more high-quality residents. The original residents who survived his ramage could be considered lucky to become Dragon City's first residents. But this is enough, my lord. For the normal people, their greatest happiness in life, which is to be fed and clothed, has already been achieved. We elves also like this passionate way of life, but unfortunately, many have already lost this obsession. Cisna sighed. She became gloomy thinking about the situation of the Silver Moon Kingdom. That's because elves live too long. Cisna, having a long lifespan makes the elves less creative and lazy. Your concept of time is different from the people in the main continent, thus there is never a sense of urgency. If only you elves existed on this continent, then the elven civilization would last for an eternity. But the world isn't that kind. 
In this world, there are humans, beast men, and other races that are competing for survival. A human's lifespan is at most a hundred years and for the majority only sixty years. It is because of this that they desperately want to leave traces of themselves in this world. It is this urgency that provokes them to develop quickly and even cause a large increase in population. The elves cannot compare at all. Louis looked at the elven girl beside him as she contemplated with her head down. Louis began to admire her beauty. The elf side profile was beautiful. It looked like a perfect sculpture cast by the greatest sculptor. Her skin was incredibly smooth and delicate. Her smooth emerald hair complements her delicate features, creating a nature-like beauty. Elves were truly worthy of their name. Their beauty wasn't something that humans could match. You are saying that because of our long life spans, we elves were once the strongest race but came to have narrow views, as a result, we could only barely survive, right? I can only say that longevity is one of the reasons, but it also has its benefits. Just look at your Silver Moon Kingdom. It has stood for more than 10,000 years without collapsing. Now, look at the human civilizations, do you think their empires could last even a thousand years? Who knows how many human kingdoms and civilizations were born and destroyed. Even the original civilization had already been lost. Louis paused for a moment and stopped talking about this topic. He instructed, this isn't something for you to think about yet. Your silver moon goddess should be the one to think about these. So Cisna, you don't have to dwell on it. What you should do now is hurry back to the Silver Moon Kingdom and tell the good news to the Queen. Cisna came back to her senses and bowed in embarrassment, it's me who has overstepped, my lord. Louis did not mind it and said, since you know what you should do, hurry up and get ready. I'm also going to meet that person from the Adventurer's Guild. Dragon City is placed in an extremely strategic location. There are mountains to the north, a jungle to the south, and a swamp to the west, there are many monsters and beasts that could serve as good resources. It would be a pity to not make use of them. In the past, the theocracy did not allow outsiders to enter this city because it's a religious country, but I will open it up. Hopefully, the adventurers of the entire continent would come here and bring more wealth to Dragon City, to become the capital of adventurers. Chapter 190, From Black Iron to Strongest King Nervous, Elton stepped into the Cathedral Palace at the summit of Dragon City. As the representative of the Adventurers Guild to Dragon City, he was already prepared for the Lord to wake up. Dragons usually slept longer than expected. As a legendary rank assassin, he had already made preparations. Since his lifespan was longer than mortals, he was prepared to wait for a long time. This mission was of the utmost importance. It wasn't because he would be punished if the mission failed. He was a valuable legendary rank assassin so he would not suffer much. The reason why Elton was so concerned about this mission was that he would become the representative of Dragon City's Adventurer's Guild if he succeeded. What he needed was the strongest power of this city's Adventurer's Guild. Legendary rank were to a certain extent still mortals. They also needed resources and power to survive and live a good life. And it was perhaps because they were legends that they required more of them. The lord of this city awakened so quickly. As expected of a primordial dragon. It's truly different from other dragons. Thinking that he was about to face a primordial dragon, Elton felt a bit jittery. After all, the other party was still a demigod. As long as the other party still had divine power, it was impossible for a legendary rank powerhouse like him to win. And even if a demigod was killed, they would usually detonate their divinity causing everyone around them to perish as well. I'm just an assassin, not a warrior. If I wasn't too greedy, then I would not be willing to face a demigod dragon like this. Elton sighed. Then he collected his thoughts and did not let his mind wander. He followed the elven maid in front of him towards the interior of the palace. The elven maid in front of him was very beautiful. With Elton's experience, he could tell that she was an elven noble that could only be seen in the capital of the elven kingdom. Her beauty was truly worthy of the name noble to the point that Elton who considered himself as still as water could feel ripples in his heart. But as he was an assassin, he was able to remain calm. In contrast to the ripples in his heart, he thought more about the other side's snow-white slender neck, thinking that he had 136 ways of breaking it. The elf walking in front of him felt a chill in her heart. Her footsteps unconsciously accelerated. In the past, many men had desired her beauty whether it was in the Silver Moon Kingdom or Dragon City. She had already been used to the prying eyes of men. But this time, she knew that the gaze from the man behind her was different. What she felt was a heart-pounding terror and the fear of death. She wasn't willing to stay with this person for too long and quickly brought him to the Lord's side. 
Not long after, Elton reached the hall in which Louis accepted audiences. When he stepped into it, Elton immediately swept his surroundings. His occupational habits made him look around for an escape route in case of danger, but when he saw a shadow dragon lying down in front of a mountain of gold, he felt incredibly shocked. Shadow dragon? I never thought that a dragon like this could still exist without being exterminated by the dragon race. Moreover, it's a legendary rank shadow dragon. Seeing Noella, Elton couldn't recognize her as the former queen of calamity at all, but he nevertheless made some internal calculations. For an assassin like him, an opponent like a shadow dragon was very troublesome, especially when the other party was of legendary rank. This made Elton even more desperate. I am here to talk about business, not to assassinate the city lord. What's there to be afraid of? Elton laughed at himself and then raised his head and looked at the one lying on top of the mountain of gold, the dragon that shone with golden brilliance. That dragon was the same size as the shadow dragon, but more majestic and awe-inspiring. The faint aura of divinity that he could sense from the dragon made Elton's body tremble slightly. This was the huge disparity in status. There was a crown atop the dragon's head and its eyes were directly looking at him. Compared to the dragons with bloodthirsty eyes that he had met before, this dragon was different. His aura was that of a superior, that of a king looking down on the people. This pressure made it hard for him to breathe. Elton hastily lowered his head to show his respect, Adventurer's Guild representative Elton greets Lord Galacrond. Louis looked at the legendary rank assassin in front of him. The dragon's expressionless appearance made it hard for the other side to guess his thoughts. A legendary rank assassin of the Adventurer's Guild was definitely close to the higher-ups. Sending such a person would not be a slap to his face. Louis guessed that the person behind the Adventurer's Guild was also a demigod, but since the other party was being secretive about it, Louis did not ask for much. Thus, he stayed silent just like that for a few seconds before slowly speaking, Elton from the Adventurer's Guild, why have you come to Dragon City? Elton was dumbfounded. He did not expect the dragon to get to the heart of the matter instantly, but he felt that the dragon was used to these kinds of affairs. He also didn't like to be roundabout, so he got straight to the point. I came to your territory on behalf of the Adventurer's Guild in hopes of establishing a branch of our guild here. You should know that there are many advantages to your territory. Whether it's the San Soliel mountain range to the north, the dense forests leading to the Silver Moon Kingdom, the swamp in the southern coastline, or the desert of the Seven Kingdom Alliance to the east, all of them contain a large number of monsters and different races. These monsters and other races possess huge economic value, but if we want to subdue them, we would need sufficient military strength. It is not worth wasting your precious troops on these monsters and other races, but our Adventurer's Guild can bring you trade prosperity at a minimal cost. Our Adventurer's Guild has a thousand years of history on the continent and has enough credibility to be trusted even by mercenaries. It's just what you need. Elton thought back on the words he had rehearsed countless times before he arrived and gushed them out in one breath. But he also knew that he did not possess the charm of bards, nor was he any kind of negotiator that could make the dragon in front of him feel moved. Louis did not agree nor refuse, but after looking at Elton, he suddenly asked, how does the Adventurer's Guild define an adventurer's level? Uh, we generally rate adventurers based on their ranks minus one level. Only after they have accomplished enough tasks will they be promoted to the next level. Elton did not know why Louis was asking these, but he still had to answer for convenience, we follow the continental standard of ranks. I don't like the way you rank each other, it's a little too boring. This novel is available on Hosted Novel. Louis directly denied the other party's words, if you want to open a branch of your adventurer's guild in Dragon City, you have to change the naming of your ranks. I don't care how you are in other countries, but in my place, you have to listen to me. What do you want to change the name into? The corner of Elton's mouth twitched. He thought that dragons were a truly egotistical race. He couldn't believe that just because the naming was bad, the dragon wanted him to change the way they had done things for more than a thousand years. From now on, don't call them things like first rank, second rank, and so on. Rather, I want you to change it to this, black iron, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, transcendental master, strongest king. B but, there's just eight of them. Moreover, how could king be used this casually? Elton said in embarrassment. Chapter 191 Damn Greedy Dragon Idiot. What's the point of keeping adventurers below the third rank? They are only useful when assembled as a legion. You can collectively call them Black Iron. You can even qualify each class with tiers. For instance, you can have Gold 1, 2, and 3. 
As for the specific conditions of the promotion, I really don't have to teach you, do I? Louis shot Elton a glance. His potent aura made the adventurer feel a fresh bout of nervousness. However, he felt that the changed naming was a lot more imposing. At least compared to the original naming system, it made people feel loftier. Since this was the Dragon Lord's request, he did not disagree. He was afraid that if he did, his idea of establishing a branch in Dragon City would not be realized. Huh. Then I shall do as you asked, sire. I will let the Adventurer's Guild headquarters work out the details when I return. After exhaling, Elton hurriedly answered in order to get what he wanted. As for the king problem that you mentioned, since it's not a good name to use casually, let's just omit it. Once couldn't bear the title of king lightly. Unless the adventurer was a demigod, using the epithet would only invite ridicule. But how could a demigod join an organization like the Adventurer's Guild? While the gods had disappeared, most major organizations were being managed by demigods. An example of this was the demigod Elven Queen who had been ruling the Silver Moon Kingdom for nearly 10,000 years. The reason why Louis wanted the Adventurer's Guild to change their naming was to let his presence influence and remain in the world. He would use the most common methods to change the details of the world. Louis's goal was to become a god, and gods needed to have the power to influence mortals to be able to change things that will and shape history. Since you have agreed to this change, then as long as you agree to this contract, you can establish an adventurer's guild in my city. As Louis finished, an elven maid came forward and handed a glowing piece of paper to Elton. Seeing that the contract had a magical binding, Elton's eyebrows jumped. From this, he could tell that Louis had already known about his goal and expected his visit. Elton took a deep breath and looked at the contents of the contract. The conditions listed bound the guild in several ways. For example, the guild needed to comply with the laws promulgated by Dragon City. This would allow Louis to sanction adventurers who perform harmful acts to Dragon City. There were many other conditions, but they were pretty standard. When the Adventurers Guild set up branches in other cities, they also signed similar contracts with the rulers there, so Alton did not feel anything wrong. However, when he saw the last article, he immediately exclaimed, You want the Adventurers Guild to turn over a portion of the proceeds to the city? That's right. Are there any problems? Sire, this, this number, this tax rate is really too high. Elton's tone was a little sharp. The Adventurers Guild had to actually pay half of their proceeds to the Lord. Who could endure such a thing? Elton, let me ask you, what was Dragon City called before? Central City. And who ruled Central City? The slain theocracy. Why didn't the Adventurers Guild set up a branch in Central City while it was in the possession of the slain theocracy? Because, because the theocracy does not allow us to not believe in their god. The more he answered Louis's questions, the more Elton's forehead was covered in cold sweat. As you can see, you could not even set up a branch here in the past. Now, I am allowing you to do so. That's the biggest difference. Moreover, it's not income that I want you to pay in, but a percentage of your profits, to be specific your net profits after subtracting various costs. This is like getting only 30% of your profits for nothing. You should be glad. Naturally, I would send a professional tax inspector to stay in your branch in case you think you can claim losses every year. Louis had a bit of accounting experience back in the day. He understood how people cooked books, so it was impossible for others to fool him. Elton felt dizzy at Louis's words. You're saying that a profit of 70% is a good earning? Moreover, you're afraid that we will evade taxes so you'll send someone to monitor us? God, is this really a dragon? To even use such methods. Even Noella was looking at Louis with a dumbfounded expression. Although dragons were greedy for wealth, this was the first time she had seen a dragon using a rightful explanation for his exploitation. He really is a monster among dragons. Yup, just like me. Noella thought. Elton, if you agree, you can sign the contract. Or perhaps you don't have the authority to agree to this contract and need to ask permission from above? Louis grinned excitedly. Naturally, Elton could understand the meaning behind his words. His face reddened. As a legendary rank powerhouse, it would make him look incompetent if he had to ask others about this kind of matter. He gritted his teeth and nodded, okay. I will sign this agreement. Speaking thusly, he signed his name with a quill handed to him by the elven maid. Very well. Since you have signed this contract, you are now a partner of Dragon City. Go find Clooney and he will choose where you shall build the Adventurer's Guild. Naturally, the construction will be funded by you. As for how to attract more adventurers to Dragon City, that's also your problem. 
When Elton walked out of the palace, he still felt muddle-headed and wondered if he had gotten a good deal. After giving us a piece of land, why is everything else left to the Adventurers Guild? Does even the publicity have to be on us? And we have to pay a portion of our annual proceeds to the Lord? God, what horrible thing did I sign? Damned greedy dragon. I really am more suited to killing people than negotiating contracts. Elton cursed, but he still gloomily left to find some people to work with. In any case, his mission was accomplished. Serge hosted novel for the original. After the legendary assassin left, Louis raised his claws and an emerald glow flashed as a small holographic elf appeared on his claw. This was a messenger from the Silver Moon Kingdom. Eh? The elf queen is actually coming to Dragon City in person? But Cisna requested to wait for a bit longer because the queen wanted to make sure of something first? Louis frowned. He didn't expect the elven queen to be more interested in this matter than he thought. Chapter 192 Visit from the Elf Queen Capital of the Silver Moon Kingdom As a set of doors opened, countless magical runes emerged from the void. A beautiful and clear figure walked out of the doors with delicate feet and stood inside the gorgeous natural palace formed by the ancient Tree of Life. Lush green vegetation clung to the surrounding walls. There was a hole on the dome's roof that led in the moonlight. The light spilling through it hung in a colorful aurora near the ceiling. Cisna respectfully knelt on one knee at the bottom of the long wooden staircase. She used her peripheral view to look at the beautiful figure standing atop the staircase and awaited the figure's beautiful voice. Find the original at hosted novel. Cisna had been waiting for more than an hour. After returning to the Silver Moon Kingdom half a month ago, she informed the queen of the news of the goddess of night's divine kingdom. The queen had told her to wait for the time being and quickly left the main continent. Cisna guessed that the queen had entered the shadow realm to confirm this piece of information. The only thing unexpected was that the queen had been gone for about half a month. If it wasn't for the fact that the queen's divine fire was still burning, then the attendants would have wondered if something had gone wrong. Luckily, the queen had returned safely. For the Silver Moon Kingdom, they could lose everything, but only the queen was irreplaceable. Cisna thought so quietly. Cisna, prepare the carriage and guards. I will depart for Dragon City. She continued standing still until the moon disappeared from sight and the sun had risen. The elf queen sighed and gave a decisive order as if she had thought about this for a long time. Your Majesty, you are personally going to Dragon City? Cisna was surprised. The elf queen had not left the Silver Moon Kingdom for a long, long time. Half a month ago, the queen had used spells to travel to the Shadow Realm, which was at best a secret departure not known to the world, but now she was going to use her carriage to pay a visit. This was equivalent to an official visit. With such a clear and blatant behavior, it served as a sign to every force on the continent that the elf queen and the demigod dragon had an intimate relationship. The reason why she took so long to decide this was because she had to calculate the consequences of doing so. Lord Galacrond has given us this piece of important information, and if I don't personally go make a request, then I would be too disrespectful. Luckily, there are no forces in between the Silver Moon Kingdom and Dragon City. This visit will only take up some time, but there is no need to worry about encountering unknown situations. The queen pondered a little and slowly issued her instructions, my child, my general, my guard, I leave the preparation of this trip to you. Go to the queen's guard and pick a batch of people. Don't choose too many or the other party would be annoyed. We are there to pay a visit and not as a show of force. But the number of people shouldn't be small as well. It will make it seem like elves have a lack of depth and heritage. It is up to you to grasp the right number. Yes, your majesty. Please leave everything to me. The ranger general bent down lower had held her chest in salute, then she quickly stood up and left the sanctuary. When Cisna left, the queen once again opened her mouth and sighed, I don't know how long this trip would take. Elders, please take care of the Silver Moon Kingdom. If there is an emergency situation, use the magical energy of the moon to activate the formation in the royal capital. In a wall not from the queen, hidden inside the vegetation, figures appeared one by one. They did not say anything and saluted to the queen, signifying that they had received her orders. These figures all looked old. The youngest of them looked like a middle-aged man, which was already in the old age of the elves. These people were the 10,000-year heritage of the Silver Moon Kingdom. These powerful legendary rank guards were elders who protected the last paradise of the elves on the main continent. As the palace fell quiet once again, the queen stood in front of a well that was full of water. She gazed at her beautiful figure and whispered, Goddess of Night, Shay. As her words fell, 
the entire palace seemed to fall into silence of absolute darkness, as if all the light in the room was covered in total darkness and the only thing that remained was eternal silence. Just when the darkness engulfed everything, a silver light from the void bloomed. It reflected the power of the sun, creating light in the eternal darkness. This was the appearance of the silver moon. A dark figure passed by in the darkness and laughed. The darkness immediately faded afterward and the palace returned to its original appearance. It was as if everything was just an illusion. But the elf queen knew that this was indeed an illusion. The goddess of night could not yet use her divine power against the core of the silver moon kingdom. But, saying your name already causes some reaction. The queen entered into deep thought. In the era when the gods sat atop their thrones, their names couldn't simply be mentioned, because that would allow them to perceive you. If a person carelessly pronounced the name of an evil god, they were more likely to bring danger to themselves. But after the era of disaster, the gods had gone into hiding. Their names had lost their effect and even mortals could just say their names without consequences. They could even curse the gods and get no reaction. But now, when the elf queen recited the name of the goddess of night, the goddess of night had a slight reaction. This was enough to prove many things. The time of the gods is nigh. This is the final test. Whether it succeeds or not. Dragon City was decorated with lights and colors as if there was a festival. The people happily enjoyed the place making the vibrant city even more lively. The Adventurers Guild worked very efficiently. In less than a month, they had already established their branch in the territory. From this day on, the Adventurers Guild Dragon City branch which had been rejected by the theocracy for hundreds of years was finally open to all those professionals who lived by the blade. The streets were already filled with imposing and fierce professionals from various races. With the arrival of these people, trade in Dragon City had picked up. Chapter 193 Men Love Health Care The taverns in Dragon City were packed to the brim with visitors. Adventurers from far and wide came to the newly opened guild, and taverns were open all through the day. These iron-blooded warriors needed the city's facilities to maintain their weapons. And as people who lived on the edge of life and death, there was very little incentive to save for a tomorrow that might not come. With Dragon City's facilities and expertise, it was sure to pull in many willing spenders. With the consumer's high demand, greedy merchants would also come to do business. These adventurers were like pirates that only came to shore only from time to time. They spent a lot of money on each visit, and this pulled countless merchants to the area. As a result, the citizens of Dragon City could also find work and earn extra income. Naturally, the arrival of these adventurers would also put enormous pressure on the city's security. In the recent period, crime rates had been on the rise, as a result, security had been the top priority of internal affairs. A big man in leather armor took a sip of the low-quality wine and yelled on top of his voice due to the noise in the tavern, what's going on here? Is there a special event happening in Dragon City? I heard that the Queen of the Silver Moon Kingdom is coming to visit the city lord. The Lord gave orders to tidy up the city to welcome her arrival. After the residents heard that, they naturally put up decorations to welcome her. You must be new around here to not even know about this. A young man beside the big man said with a hint of mockery in his voice. The big man gave the young speaker a vicious glare, but after seeing that the person who was laughing at him was wearing a simple robe and holding a wand, his anger immediately deflated, and whispered in astonishment, A mage? Yeah. I am a three-ring mage from the historical city of Agoran. After registering in the Adventurer's Guild, I am now a silver-rank adventurer. Ha! I heard that the Dragon Lord asked the Adventurer's Guild to change the naming. Silver-rank adventurer sounds much more distinguished than third-rank adventurer. The young mage looked easygoing. Although his face carried the pride of a mage, he still casually chatted with these crude warriors. I am a fourth-rank warrior from the warrior capital of Kios. I am also a silver rank adventurer like you. The big man's expression immediately became intimate. Knowing a mage was definitely a good thing for a party of adventurers. I could instantly tell you are from Kios with just a glance. If you were from Sibula, I would have ignored you. The young man cheekily grinned. From the looks of it, he had just left his mentor and entered society, so he did not yet have much experience. Kios and Agoran were both part of the Seven Kingdom Alliance. It was an alliance made up of seven duchies who united to face off against the threat of the Sibylla Empire. As a result, they do not interact with the Sibylla Empire all that much. The two smiled at each other and felt as if they were meeting an old friend. Speaking about the facilities here, they really piss me off. You have to go to the toilets to urinate, 
and if you're caught urinating on the streets, you will be fined. I had to part with a small fortune earlier. This is the law that the Lord set. You have to obey it, but this city is so clean, much cleaner than a Goran. The mage sighed. About the elf queen that you mentioned, is that the queen of the Silver Moon Kingdom, whose country doesn't let a single outsider go in? Yeah. It's that place. That place is an elven settlement from my mentor. It's said that the demigod rank queen of the country hadn't left the city for thousands of years. This time, her personal visit to Dragon City is considered an extremely rare event. It seems that the demigod primordial dragon is a lot more terrifying than imagined. At a glance, the mage seemed to know a lot more things and whispered, my mentor said that the queen is a rare beauty in the world. Just look at the elves. Each one of them is beautiful, meaning that the queen's appearance must be unimaginable. Sure, keep your voice down. That person's a demigod, so let's stop talking about it. The big man quickly raised his finger. What are you afraid of? She's not a true god whose name couldn't be said easily. It's fine as long as we don't badmouth demigods to their faces. The mage's knowledge brought him enough guts to talk about demigods without fear. Speaking of elves, there are so many fucking elves in this city, especially close to the east side barracks. There are a lot of pretty bubbly elf girls. TSK. That body, that face, that skin, human women simply cannot compare. The big man licked his lips and showed a lewd smile, fuck, after seeing so many elves, I thought I could play with one in the city. Unfortunately, I did not find any elves selling themselves in the city, but the human woman I had yesterday skin. Don't even think about it. Elves rarely do that kind of thing. Perhaps some do in the Sibula Empire. That's is why elven slaves are worth a lot of money. Even if there are elves that are selling themselves, do you think that you can even afford them? Playing with one a single time would suck your bank dry. The young man looked at his peer and beamed. I came to this city earlier than you and didn't even find a place to play with women. You mages are just too prideful, always ignoring those below you. This isn't a place like the theocracy, which doesn't allow brothels to exist. As soon as I arrived here, I immediately found the place and heard them call it healthcare. The big man came over and carelessly said, Our group has a total of seven people with a variety of professions. We are almost complete and just short of a mage. We accepted a quest from the Lord to inspect the monsters and other races living in San Soliel Mountain Range. What do you say? Do you want to join us? It's better to have someone watching your backs than fighting alone. The mage hesitated and under the big man's gaze, he nodded his head, okay. If the quest isn't too dangerous and your comrades are really as good as you say, I'll agree. The big man smiled and hastily said, don't worry. You can leave your backs to everyone. We won't let you down. Now come, let's drink a couple of cups as we watch the elf queen's arrival. Let's have a good time tonight. Sorry, we mages do not drink. Then you have lost one of the pleasures of men. What is the difference between that and not being able to have sex? The young man fell speechless. Dragon City's appearance gradually aligned with Louis's expectations. At this time, he was waiting at the white marble plaza in front of the palace. His hand touched the railings as he looked over the city while waiting for the elven queen. Behind him were the elven maids who were all dressed up and waiting for their queen's arrival. Chapter 194 The Queen Arrives Dragon's Elven Form From the plains beyond Dragon City marched a legion of around 500 elves. In the midst of them was a carriage. The coach was pulled by four pure white unicorns, and its chassis was constructed from luxurious wood and emerald green vines. The outside of the carriage was carved with countless patterns, imbued with magical meaning. At the center of the carriage lay a crescent moon and ten stars surrounding it. This was the sacred emblem of the silver moon goddess. The carriage passed through the plains without encountering a single bump, and the space within it was far larger than it might have seemed from the outside a clear indication of spatial magic. The five hundred elves were just there to show the face of the elves and as a ceremony. The person they were protecting was a powerful demigod, so their protection wasn't really needed. As long as a demigod still had divine power, it would be very difficult to kill them. A hand that faintly glistened under the sun stretched out and opened the carriage window. It exposed the mesmerizing and elegant elf queen, whose face was shrouded under a layer of mist. Your Majesty, we are hosted novel, find us on Google. Seeing the queen reveal herself, Cisna hastily rode her nightsaber steed closer to the carriage and greeted the queen respectfully. We're almost there, Cisna. The queen spoke in a clear, refreshing voice. Yes, your majesty. There is at most an hour before we arrive at Dragon City. 
Cisna did not expect that it would take her an entire month during this trip before returning to Dragon City. She felt a bit nostalgic. What a spectacular city built on a mountain. It's completely different from our style. The queen looked afar at the snow-capped peaks of the mountains and the huge city built on its side. The city looked white from a distance as if it was carved out from white jade. This was one of the characteristics of the stone mined near Dragon City. The exterior of the rock was as white as alabaster. Looking at it from afar made it seem like the kingdom of a god in the former heavenly mountains. As she thought about this, her mind wandered a bit to her memories of the past. When Dragon City had been ruled by the theocracy which mainly believed in the goddess of mourning and the god of war, they had created the city into the same style as the goddess of mourning's former divine kingdom which was located in the heavenly mountain of the outer realms. Although human life was short, humanity was an incredible race. The humans' gods and goddesses were the strongest in the world of San Solio, but they also had lots of infighting the same as their patron race. As a result, saying this, the queen closed her mouth again as if she was feeling it. Cisna listened silently. Although she was curious about what the queen said about the gods, she did not dare ask. After a few moments of silence, the queen spoke again, although the beastmen's divine system, the dwarf's divine system, and the elves' divine system wasn't as strong as the humans' divine system, they are much more united as a race due to their lack of strength. In the past, we elves also had several gods, but after the era of disaster, only Lady Silver Moon remained. She would even try her hardest to answer the prayers of her believers. Although it might be inappropriate to say this about the gods, I believe that when our gods fell, the nature gods who were allied with them fell as well. The gods that the inhabitants of the forest and druids believe in no longer respond. The queen's tone was light as if she was just talking about a piece of history, but Cisna could only feel a chill and a trace of fear in her heart. No matter what, she could not imagine what happened during the era of disaster that caused many gods to fall and the stars, the symbol of gods, to fade from the sky. The queen drew back the curtain, and the elven guards marched on with an even pace. Cisna followed along while feeling muddle-headed. She thought about the age when the elven gods were still alive and watched over and protected them. She thought about how the gods existed in heaven and on earth, and how majestic that era was. The queen's guards were absolute elites with an average rank of five to six. Among them, some even reached the seventh rank. With the power of battle formations and magic, they could cause a legendary rank powerhouse to give a run for their money. Although they could not win, they could force the other side back. These soldiers were very quiet. Only the faint sound of metal boots falling on the grass echoed. This spectacular legion arrived at Dragon City. The guards who were already notified in advance directly let them in. The elves living in Dragon City also came to meet their queen. Although they were now residents of Dragon City, they could not easily forget the queen that they had served for hundreds of years. The queen's carriage moved along the spacious road built by Louis. The road spiraled upward, allowing many people, be it residents or adventurers, from around the continent to curiously watch the arrival of these elves. Let alone the rumored elf queen, even the elite guards were never seen in other parts of the continent before. The people cheered and placed flowers in the center of the road. The girls looked adoringly at the stoic yet handsome faces of the male elven soldiers while the men eyed the female elven warriors with yearning. Some of the adventurers were gazing at their equipment with undisguised envy. The Silver Moon Kingdom was truly a country with millennia's worth of heritage. Although their population was small, they possessed a lot of treasures. Their entire equipment from weapons to armor, including the boots under their feet, were magical items made with magical inscriptions. These armors shone with silver light under the sun. Everybody from civilians to merchants to adventurers was dazzled. They were finally able to witness what the most elite soldiers in the main continent were like. The elven guards were welcomed by everyone in Dragon City. They walked through the civilian district, the noble district, and finally arrived at the uppermost district, where the lord resided. Five hundred soldiers neatly stood in a formation. The carriage pulled by unicorns came to a stop in front of the square. Time stood still until the carriage door opened. A pair of immaculate snow-white bare feet stepped on the square that was made from jade-white bricks. Then the silver moon revealed itself and shone down, illuminating the endlessly charming body wearing cloud-like light muslin covered in emerald green leaves. The queen relaxed her tender fingers and let the veil fall, covering the white bricks beneath her feet. When she looked up at Louis who greeted her, she froze for a moment before opening her lips. Her voice that was as clear as spring water sounded, You are so considerate, Lord Galacrond. 
Louis, who appeared in front of the elf queen, was neither in dragon form nor human form, but in elf form. He had a pair of long ears, and his pupils were still the same inverted dragon eyes that let out a golden radiance. His hair did not turn into the common green color of the elves but turned into the same silver moonlight color as the elf queen. There were some complex patterns painted on Louis's face that were the ancient elven facial decoration. Louis's appearance in this form was already considered his highest level of service. Chapter 195 Trial Between Demigods After the elf queen greeted Louis, her gaze turned towards the dragon coiled behind the square behind him. Although her face was shrouded with the mystical mist, anyone could feel that she was smiling. Miss Noella, I'm happy to be able to see you again after a thousand years. The queen was polite. No matter who met her, she would always be gentle towards them. Anyone could feel the gap in nobility when they face her, but they would also be attracted to her regardless of class and rank. Humph. We meet again, your majesty. Noella raised her head and snorted. She did not have any ill will towards the elf queen, but it did not mean she had good feelings either. The two of them did not really know each other well. But in the past Noella had once been curious about the Silver Moon Kingdom, so she sneaked inside, but was later found out by the queen and was driven out. As a proud dragon, she naturally had a bit of a grudge, but because she understood that sneaking in was unreasonable, she did not think of taking revenge. Naturally, the main reason why Noella did not have any ill will towards the elf queen was that she wasn't part of those people who tried to kill her a thousand years ago. As long as she did not trespass into the forest of the moon or massacre the elves, the elven queen did not really care much about the matter on the main continent. Your Majesty! The elven maids behind Louis all kneeled down and saluted. The elf queen glanced at them and knew what kind of changes they have gone through. She understood what a male dragon could do when she sent them over. Get up. You are already the maids of Lord Galacrond. No need to bow to me. Search hosted novel for the original. The queen extended her hand to support the elves to stand up. At this point, Louis said, You don't have to call me by my surname. Just Louis is fine. These maidens are still elves. You are the queen who has sheltered them for thousands of years. They deserve to show you respect. The queen slightly raised her head to look at Louis. From her body, Louis could feel an emotion of surprise. The queen was truly surprised. Although there was brief contact between the two of them when they first met, there was no contact after that. The connection between Louis and the elves relied on Cisna to be the middleman. Everything the queen knew about Louis came from Cisna. Cisna is indeed correct. You are an unusual dragon. The elf queen sighed. She felt that most of the dragons were so prideful that others felt tired dealing with them. When dragons communicated, they were always angry. As a result, people had to be careful not to annoy them. If a dragon became a demigod, there was no doubt that their arrogance would break through the sky. Although the queen could detect the pride buried deep within Louis's bones, Louis's outward performance would make others doubt that he was a dragon. This was especially when Louis was in the form of an elf. The queen could only feel that his aura was now like an arrogant elf. These are the people who help me manage the city. I won't introduce them anymore. Standing here is a bit inappropriate. Why don't we go inside and have a long talk, your majesty? Louis casually pointed at Lisfer, Marches, and the others, but did not even go over their names. The reason for that was that Louis understood that the queen was a demigod. She might seem friendly, but she still possesses an instinctive disdain over mortals. Other than Louis who was a demigod like her, only Noella could make the queen look at her as the dragon who destroyed many countries a thousand years ago. Stay on guard here. The queen raised her hand and ordered the five hundred guards who followed her to guard the outside of the palace. She and Louis walked side by side and entered the palace together. Other than the elven maids, everyone else was left outside. Cisna also remained standing outside in a disciplined manner. She knew that the reason the queen came here was to discuss important things with Lord Galacrond. Under the situation where she wasn't allowed, she tried not to disturb. The others also stayed passive. As the two demigods discussed matters, it was not in their place as mortals to make any guesses. Only Noella felt some dissatisfaction. With the arrival of the elf queen, her sleeping space had been occupied. She unhappily lay on the ground and closed her eyes. Although she could not sleep on a mountain of gold, the white jade cast on the square was sufficient. The five hundred elite elves brought by the queen straightened their bodies without saying a word. The guards of the Dragon City also stood guard to prevent anyone from disturbing the demigods' conversation. Louis, who entered the palace with the elf queen, looked at her from the corner of his eye. 
The demigod elf queen was tall. According to Earth's measurement, she was more than five feet tall, which was already close to the average male height in San Solio. She wore a semi-transparent light muslin that hid her infinitely beautiful and delicate body. Her snow-white legs moved step by step, carrying a deadly charm with every swing. Her slender waist was tightened by silver-white ribbons. Although her face was covered in mist, that kind of hazy beauty was more confusing to the heartstrings. Her entire person emitted a dreamlike divine aura that could make all people desire her. She was a beautiful woman that could only be described as a goddess. Although there were no external decorations on her body, her temper made her unapproachable. Not long after, the two arrived at the place where Louis stored his treasure. Looking at the mountains of gold in contrast to the moonlike woman next to him, Louis suddenly felt that his treasures were somewhat vulgar. They passed through the treasure trove and arrived at the back garden. Here, there were small bridges, rivers, and hundreds of flowers blooming. The environment was quiet and natural. The environment here is a bit similar to the Silver Moon Kingdom. The queen praised with a bit of joy in her tone. In the garden, there were two chairs side by side with a square jade table in the middle. Since they were both demigods regardless of status and wealth, it was appropriate for them to sit on the same level. I know you've come a long way. I have specially prepared some good desserts for you. As Louis's words came out, the elven maids walked in like fluttering butterflies. They brought several exquisite cakes that were high-grade goods from Earth. These cakes had been preserved by Louis with spells, allowing their taste to remain unchanged for a long period of time. Other than the cakes decorated with cream and fruits, there was also a bottle of red wine brought in by the elves. The queen looked at the pastries and then at the bottle of wine and let out a thoughtful smile, these pastries and the bottle of wine are not made by any race in the main continent. She seemed to be unintentionally testing him. She should have already guessed that these things came from a different realm, but she would never have imagined that these came from outside the crystal wall system. The amount of information I can get from her would depend on what she wants from me, Louis thought. Chapter 196 I want to believe in the goddess of love. That place is indeed a beautiful and vast realm. I lived there for as long as 30,000 years, but in the end, I found my way back thanks to your help. If you had not provided me with the coordinates, it would have been very difficult for me to find my way back from the borderless world of stars. Louis paused after spouting out half-lies and half-truths. It was not possible for him to tell the full truth. Earth was Louis's greatest secret and a base where he could gather pure faith. He especially could not let anyone know about the artificial tunnel that the Terran civilization created in the crystal wall system. However, telling lies was also bad. It was very difficult to completely deceive a demigod. When a person told a lie once, they would do so again and again, and eventually, the lies would pile up to the point that they tore themselves apart. Since Louis was not a con artist, he did not possess the ability to lie to gods and demigods. As a result, this half-truth half-lie that Louis made was much more believable. Louis had tried to make Earth sound like a different realm and not a world outside the crystal wall system to confuse the elf. The elf queen did not react in any way, but she actually knew that these words were only partly true. Her noble eyes hidden behind the mistletoe decoration on her hair stared at the cake in her hand and the wine bottle. The materials used to make the cake and the construction of the bottle were not simple. The main continent was already considered as the most civilized realm in the world of San Soliel, so the elf queen could not understand what kind of realm Louis encountered to achieve this level of civilization. In addition to these, Louis had brought refined wheat and high-quality steel in unbelievable quantities. This made the realm he encountered more mysterious in her eyes. But she did not dig too deeply. Everyone had their own secrets, especially when it comes to demigods and gods. She also had her secrets that she concealed from Louis, so she did not particularly care about this. She slightly pulled up her robes, exposing her slender feet in front of Louis's eyes. Her snow-white feet were like exquisite white jade. The moment Louis saw them, his eyes could not move away. The queen seemed to have sensed Louis's gaze and flashed a smile. She was amused by the male dragon's reaction to her, but she did not pay much attention to it. Instead, she focused on the cake on the table and curled her slender arms to cut off a piece of cake with the spoon and ate it. Louis raised his eyes. He watched as the mist covering the queen's face did not disappear at all and only shook a bit. When eating, that strange mist did not dissipate at all. This elf is really strange for not revealing herself no matter what. Could it be that if anyone saw her real face, she would have to marry them? Louis inwardly thought to himself as he recalled stories in wuxia novels, then he shook his head and chuckled. 
Sansolial civilization was closer to Western civilization. It did not have strange rules like those wuxia stories. Ho, the queen once again swallowed a piece of strawberry cake and exhaled lightly. The entire atmosphere had become sweeter. This is a really delicious dessert. If my people can also enjoy such delicacies at any time, then the elves would really be living a rich life. A burst of nostalgia and greed came out from her voice. If you wish, I still have enough desserts here for you to try. Why don't you bring some with you when you return to the Silver Moon Kingdom? Lord Louis is quite generous. Truly unlike the petty dragons. The queen lightly laughed. Her tender hand picked up the crystal cup and shook it gently causing the powerful scent of the grape wine to spread. Then she carefully drank it and said with satisfaction, there is no sour taste at all. There is only the clear taste of fermented grapes that only the gods could taste in the past. Louis was not surprised by the queen's enjoyment. The gods of San Soliel were not Buddhas who had to let go of their desires. The gods of San Soliel enjoyed material and spiritual satisfaction. They were without ethics or morals and indulged in pleasure without restraint while performing their duties. For example, in the divine kingdom of the god of love and beauty, as long as two people fancied each other, they could enjoy doing the deed in the name of love. They could even enjoy food, wine, and song and dance performances. Louis sometimes regretted that he did not live in the era when the gods were still around. If he was, he would be a regular visitor there. If he was a normal person, he would become a believer. Just when Louis's mind wandered off, the queen finished enjoying the aftertaste. She placed down the wine glass, thought for a moment, and said, I want to thank you for the information you asked Cisna to give me. The information about the goddess of night's divine kingdom is very important to me. It's here. Louis quickly collected his thoughts and knew that the queen was about to get down to business. This information was something that the red dragon told me. I didn't go confirm it myself, but I thought that it might be useful to you, so I asked Cisna to pass it on. Louis said with a broad smile as he played with a wine glass. I went to the Shadow Realm and spent half a month to determine the authenticity of this information and found the divine kingdom of the goddess of night. So, so, I wish to invite Lord Louis to the Shadow Realm with me to explore the goddess of night's divine kingdom. For demigods like us, even if the goddess of night's divine kingdom has fallen, we will still be able to find some benefits. The queen sincerely invited him. Louis did not agree immediately. He just pretended to think and only shook his head after a long time. Noella told me that she had seen the goddess of night in person in her divine kingdom a thousand years ago. I do not know what the states of the gods are like at the moment, but entering the fallen divine kingdom of a living god would pose a lot of danger to us demigods. Your Majesty, although I am lustful and greedy, I will not risk my life to venture through the unknown. Louis was tempted to agree to the queen's plans. He also desired to go and explore the goddess of night's divine kingdom, but there was also a real danger there. Moreover, the queen seemed that she had to go, but after finding it, she did not go in alone and came to invite him inside. There was no doubt that there was trouble inside. Louis needed more detailed information and intelligence before he dared to enter the divine kingdom. As expected, the elf queen was also in thought. She knew that this invitation without any benefits would not easily move Louis. Lord Louis, I wonder how much you know about the era of disaster? Support us at Hosted Novel. Suddenly, the queen opened her lips. Her clear and gentle voice echoed in Louis's mind, causing his heartstring to tremble. Is she testing me? Testing whether I am a primordial dragon or not? This might be the case. In the beginning, I was summoned into this world by her divine power. She should have sensed something was wrong with me, especially when I was able to take out this many supplies. It would be stranger if she didn't suspect anything. As Louis's mind spun, he immediately came to a decision and spoke. The era of disaster was caused by an invasion from a foreign civilization outside the crystal wall system. Chapter 197 Ancient Secrets, The Secret to Becoming a God Louis did not go into too much detail as that would increase the risks of him exposing himself. Louis didn't fully understand what happened during the era of disaster. Whenever he asked the intelligent brain about it, it would find an excuse to not answer him. After doing his own research in San Soliel and asking the Queen of Calamity, it was only then that he found out there were almost no records of what had happened. Louis could only speculate regarding the details of those turbulent times. After listening to Louis's words, the elf queen's expression changed a little. Other than the gods who participated in that disaster, almost no records were written down. 
It was as if the entire world was trying to forget that this tragic event happened by eliminating all possible impacts of the Terran civilization's invasion. Since Louis was able to say these words, the Elf Queen believed that Louis indeed survived from that era, that he was a primordial dragon who returned from the stars. By the end of the era of disaster, most of the mid-rank to low-rank gods had fallen. Even some powerful gods perished, but in their desperate efforts, they were able to beat back the invading civilization from the crystal wall system. The enemy has not appeared since then. The most regrettable thing that happened was the fall of the five-colored dragon god. Before the strange civilization that used strange weapons left, they were able to kill the five-colored dragon god and leave with his corpse. At this point, the queen was shocked and immediately stared at Louis. Louis could tell that the queen's eyes were shining in the darkness. This queen suspected that I and the five-colored dragon god and the Terran civilization are related? Ha, she really is a demigod that has lived for tens of thousands of years. Her wisdom cannot be underestimated. Louis had been smiling. His expression did not change at all, he pondered for a moment before saying, I know you have your speculations, and I can tell you this, I am indeed related to the mighty five-colored dragon god, but I have no relationship with those invaders from outside the crystal wall system. Louis thought for a little. He felt that it would be better to throw out the name of the progenitor of dragons to make the queen trust him. As for the Terran civilization, it would be better for the people of the world to have no idea that he was involved with them. Who knew how much hatred the gods had of the Terran civilization? When the time came, he would be in trouble if they wanted revenge. He wasn't the inheritor of the Terran civilization, nor was he its leader. He was only a creature transformed by their technology. If he had to take the blame for the wrongs of the Terran civilization, he would be worse off with nothing to gain. The queen nodded her head. Seeing that Louis was so frank and directly admitted that he was related to the five-colored dragon god, she felt that she could expose some information. As the gods gradually recovered, Louis would one day know of them anyway. It would be better for her to tell him early and gain an ally for the chaotic era that was about to come. After having these thoughts, the queen looked around. Seeing that there was no one eavesdropping, she slowly spoke, Lord Louis has been away from the main continent for more than 30,000 years, so you must be curious about what's happening on the main continent. Louis understood that the queen was going to spill some ancient secrets and quickly perked up his ears. You may be asking why no new god has appeared in the main continent. Louis's inverted pupils shrunk, and he nodded, I have indeed been wondering about that. It has already been tens of thousands of years after the era of disaster. Countless geniuses and extremely lucky people should have been born. Powerful demigods should have risen, but why haven't they become gods yet? I have looked through some ancient books. I knew that many demigods had found churches, but they all failed without exception. They all fell at the final stage of deification. Probabilistically, that should be impossible. Louis almost said that this wasn't scientific, but he quickly changed his wording. That is because, after the era of disaster, the basic rules of the world changed. Just as people needed to recuperate after being wounded, and animals needed to lick their injuries, the world of San Soliel was also traumatized by the events that happened during the era of disaster. In order to recover, the crystal wall system fell asleep. During this period, it was naturally impossible for new gods to be born. After the era of disaster, the starry skies were unable to withstand the birth of stars that symbolized the gods. This caused the world to be plunged into turbidity. We are hosted novel, find us on Google. The gods were once divided into camps of good and evil, order and chaos. Every god who obtained their power and authority would have to follow the rules of the crystal wall system. Those gods who were labeled as good had to act good, while those who were labeled evil had to act evil. The more the gods overstepped, the more the camps shifted. When a god shifted closer to their camp, there was nothing wrong with it, but if the gods shifted to the other camp, then it was likely that the god would lose their followers and be pulled down from the stars and fall. The elf queen explained the secrets of the gods before the era of disaster. Louis also listened carefully. He could understand that good and evil, order and chaos were opposed to each other. It seemed that the gods of San Soliel were quite restricted in the scope of their behaviors. Their actions not only had to conform with their own camp, but also had to be in line with their own divine authority. Was it the gods who harnessed the power of the divine authority or was it the divine authority that controlled the gods? This question was a bit hard to answer. But even I do not need to comply with those rules during that era. With the faith from earth, even if I am not considered a god in the world of San Soliel, I would still be a foreign god. But my dragon god's godhood would have to follow these rules. 
Louis thought. With these rules, it was impossible for the god of war and the goddess of love to become allies. It could even be said that the two were enemies, but after the era of disaster, everything turned to chaos. All the restrictions of the gods had disappeared. It was only then that the god of war and the goddess of love entered into a temporary alliance to restore peace. The goddess of darkness also joined in as well as the goddess of mourning. The result of this alliance brought forth the theocracy that we know today. However, in a world where the gods don't exist, the teachings of the two goddesses, namely the goddess of night and goddess of love, weren't suitable for the common people and the various countries. As a result, their followers inside the theocracy are sparse. As for the god of war and goddess of mourning, I am not too certain. The queen's bell-like voice echoed in Louis's mind. This cleared a fog inside his brain, showing him what happened 30,000 years ago before the gods disappeared from the world. Louis felt that he himself would soon know the secrets of this era and the gods so that he could occupy a place in the upcoming era of chaos. Chapter 198 Who exactly is the Elf Queen? Louis listened quietly and waited for the Elf Queen to answer his questions for him. After the great destruction, the gods all knew that they would fall into a deep slumber, but they did not know whether they would be able to wake up again. This worried even the mightiest of them. Although gods are powerful, they need faith to maintain their statuses. The gods could not predict how long the crystal wall system would take to repair itself. It might be in a thousand years, or it could be eons. If the world was restored but no one had any faith in the gods, then the gods would fall from the stars, causing a great decay in the astral realm. It was just at that time from the heavenly mountains to the realm of bliss, from the bottomless abyss to the nine hells of Bator, from the endless wilderness to the mechanical realm, from the main continent to the inner elemental plane only 10% of the living beings survived. The gods weren't able to do anything in a short period of time. They could only leave behind some insurance and fall into a deep sleep. With the gods slumbering, the connections between the realms weakened. Every living creature went into rest and recuperation, and 30,000 years had passed since then. In the current era, the goddess of mourning and the god of war have the best luck. The seeds that they left behind had become the present-day theocracy which provided them ample faith. The goddess of night and goddess of love had the worst luck. Although they entered an alliance, they did not get many benefits due to a difference in doctrine. The elf queen's words made Louis feel a sense of enlightenment. He immediately gained a deeper understanding of the world of Sansoliel. If the world of Sansoliel was compared to a human being, then the invasion of the Terran civilization was likened to a virus attack. It would cause great damage to a person. Although the virus was solved by the efforts of the gods who could be considered as the defense system, ultimately the body had been gravely injured and needed to rest to recover. Although the gods were powerful, their existence in the world took up a lot of resources and energy. So when the world repaired itself, the gods would also fall asleep. As a result, no new gods could be born due to the huge burden it would place on the world. Thinking of this, Louis felt sorry for the countless geniuses and talents that had fallen over the past 30,000 years. Those demigods thought that they had encountered the best era to become gods with no god to stop them. They were even free to choose which divine authority they wanted without thinking about the gods who possessed the same authority. Unbeknownst to them, they were actually living in the worst of times, because no matter how hard they tried, they wouldn't be able to become gods since the rules of the world had changed. Louis did not interrupt and continued to listen to the Elf Queen's speech. The Elf Queen paused for a moment and lifted the crystal cup with her delicate fingers. After taking two mouthfuls of the ruby-colored liquid and moistening her throat, she continued. I'm sure you've noticed that after 30,000 years, the world has nearly recovered. The connection between the realms is returning. Ancient beings and gods have now begun to show their presence in various ways. I have been to the abyss and hell before to see that the number of demons and devils is rapidly growing. Although it could not compare to the era before the era of disaster, the evil souls from the Styx River are beginning to infest the abyss and become demons on a large scale. You've been gone from the main continent for 30,000 years. You may be uninformed about the situation on the main continent. In fact, the theocracy was been unable to receive any response from their gods, and only in the recent centuries were they able to obtain some partial answers through prayers. As a result, they were given divine magic. This caused the overall power of the theocracy to increase in recent years. Before that, the human world had always been in turmoil with constant wars. Louis thought deeply about all that the elf queen said. This elven demigod, who has lived for more than 10,000 years, can be called a living history. 
She has stayed in the Silver Moon Kingdom, watching the development of the world with cold eyes. As long as no one launched an invasion against the elves, she would not intervene in the many conflicts and wars that happened on the main continent. She knew that the losses were not worth it. In a world where one could not become a god, it was better to preserve one's strength. No, it's not right to think of it like that. In historical records, the Silver Moon Kingdom was formed within 1,000 to 2,000 years after the era of disaster, resulting in the elves becoming the dominant race in the main continent. This queen is actually very ambitious, but the elven way of life and their birth rate hampered her ambitions. Louis thought for a moment before slowly opening his mouth, Your Majesty, you have said so much, but what's the relationship of this with the goddess of night's divine kingdom? Hearing Louis's question, the queen smiled sweetly, or at least that was how Louis perceived it given the mist covering her face. The gods are about to return. The era of the gods will come once again. Since you are extremely lucky to have returned to the main continent in this era, do you have any plans of becoming a god? The queen went straight to the point. This silenced Louis for a moment, and he said, any mortal that gains a chance at doing so wouldn't be able to resist the allure of becoming a god. This is what I want to explain to you. After the end of the era of disaster, the gods fell into a state of incomprehensible slumber. Their divine kingdoms had all fallen causing the gap between ancient gods and new gods to close in. Louis nodded secretly at her words. If it was an era when gods were still around, Louis would only be a new god if he became one. At most, he could receive a part of the five-colored dragon god's legacy. But compared to the ancient gods who had lived for eons, the gap between him and them was too big. Moreover, those ancient gods would have divine kingdoms that housed the accumulation of people for tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of years. Even if Louis became a god, he would have to stay low-key. But everything was different now. With the fall of the divine kingdoms, all the gods were now at the same starting line. At this time, Louis understood what the queen was trying to say. It is as you imagine Lord Louis. The gods who could not give back to their people were called false gods in the past. Their faith was very difficult to spread. Even the believers of the goddess of mourning and the god of war were not many in the theocracy. They couldn't even let the faith spread in the Subala Empire. You can try to imagine what the states of the other gods are like right now. Even if those ancient gods all return, they will end up in a state of having no divine kingdom or believers. This is your opportunity, Lord Louis. Louis's expression changed as he was convinced by the queen's words. There was no mistake in it at all. With those ancient gods having few believers and without divine kingdoms, everyone would have the same starting line. No, it could be said that he had a bigger advantage compared to the gods. While the gods weren't able to spread their faith, he had already established a church within Dragon City to gather faith. Even if he was forced to take on the establishment of the city. Louis sighed, has anybody ever called your majesty the Archduke of Hell? Your perplexing words had truly moved me. Since the current gods were not stronger than him, even if the gods had an advantage in experience, they were inferior to him in all other aspects, especially faith. Then why wouldn't he try to fight for himself to obtain a bigger lead? With the absence of believers and a divine kingdom, the gods who were asleep for 30,000 years would have their divine powers weakened. On the other hand, he had the godhood of the five-colored dragon god in his soul. There was nothing for him to be afraid of, so now was the best time to take some resources. But Louis was also a bit apprehensive. The elf queen seemed to know a little too much. She was like a god who could see everything. In the end, what was her actual identity? Could she be the silver moon goddess incarnation? That shouldn't be the case. Since all the gods were asleep, the silver moon goddess is no exception. Her incarnation wouldn't be able to move at all. Could she be the silver moon goddess chosen one? That shouldn't also be the case. It's the same reason as above. If the gods are asleep and can't act, then their chosen ones would have organized the faith and not disappear without any traces. For a moment, Louis could only make guesses. Chapter 199 The Queen Stays Overnight Although it was impossible to guess her true identity, Louis knew that the elf queen had successfully piqued his interest with her offer. His prior vacillation had now solidified into a clear intention. Although protagonists in novels would always gain benefits in their adventures, reality did not work that way. That kind of bullheaded thinking and behavior was definitely dangerous. Now that he was able to find out the real state of the gods from the elf queen, he understood that he was on the same starting line as the gods, and might even be a few steps ahead of them. If he remained timid and did nothing, then he would probably not be able to raise his courage in this lifetime. You have succeeded in convincing me, your majesty. 
Louis played with the crystal cup in his hand and raised it to the queen, as a dragon who aspires to be a god, it would be too cowardly of me to hesitate in this situation. But I require a few days' wait in the interest of preparations. Louis ran some calculations silently in his head. Because he had divinity, he could convert faith into divine power. Although the conversion rate was bad and could not reach the level of gods, it was enough for demigod-level combat. It must be known that the power of gods was never expressed in combat but in the incredible miracles that they could create. Their extraordinary powers could do many unimaginable things. For example, the topography could change with just a word. They could also change the rules of the world such that only physical combat could be performed. Louis would have no way of dealing with this since he was not yet a real god. The rules of this world did not allow the emergence of gods yet. Louis secretly calculated based on his accumulation rate of divine power after two months. If he wanted to fill up the godhood in a short period of time, it was an impossible thing to do, but the amount should be enough for him to be able to face off against a demigod. In any case, even if the gods are gradually waking up, they aren't their original selves anymore. Under the situation where everyone is at the demigod level and does not have much divine power, I do not need to fear anything. Although the gods were powerful and the speed at which they converted faith was much faster, they were no longer the same. There would be a limit to their conversion rates as they had already lost most of their believers. In the absence of faith, having a high conversion rate was useless. It was like an advanced car engine without any gasoline to start it up. Louis had been spreading his faith in Dragon City. Although these beliefs were too scattered due to the momentary lack of proper organization, constructing a church would solve this problem in the long run. In terms of the total amount of faith that could be gathered, Louis should have surpassed most of the gods that hadn't awakened yet. The only ones Louis had to stay alert for would be the god of war and goddess of mourning. These two gods had been lucky to have the support of the faith from the people of the theocracy. When facing them, Louis had to be extra careful. That is natural, but how long would it take for you to prepare? The elf queen knew that even if the goddess of night's situation was in bad shape, there was still a certain level of preparation necessary to face it. Louis's request was quite reasonable. Half a month should be enough. I wonder what you think about it. Louis calculated the amount of time he needed and gave a clear answer. Half a month? Very well. Since that is the case, then I might bother you to allow me to stay here for half a month. The elf queen pondered and nodded her head. She carefully thought about it. Although traveling back and forth from Dragon City to the Silver Moon Kingdom only required a short amount of time for a demigod like her, she was curious about Dragon City and Louis. Thus, she chose to stay in it for half a month. She wanted to see the city's developments and possibly uncover some of Louis's secrets. We are hosted novel, find us on Google. For example, where did Louis procure his supplies from? What was Louis's relationship with the five-colored dragon god? These were the things that she truly wanted to know you're willing to stay in this city? I couldn't ask for more. I think that this event will also be recorded in the history books. I have a palace cathedral here. Although it's not as good as your palace in the Silver Moon Kingdom, I think I can at least meet your needs. Louis's words carried a slight pride. When he previously returned to Earth, he had procured a large number of supplies for the development of Dragon City. At the same time, he had also procured goods for his own enjoyment. Louis had been fed up with the scarcity of supplies in Sansoliel. The food and drinks in this world simply could not compare to Earth at all. Because of the backward culture of Sansoliel, even if he was in a high position, there were things that he could not obtain. You are very polite. Although we elves are fond of pleasure, we aren't like humans. I do not require much in terms of housing. As long as it is as natural and beautiful as your garden, it is enough. The elf queen pursed her lips and smiled. Although she looked like an immortal fairy, she was unlike one at all. She was an elf, and elves also had material needs. That's why she didn't say that she needed anything and only a rough meal was enough. Louis gladly accepted her arrangements. Since that's the case, I'll leave this garden fully in your hands while you live here. Although Louis liked the beautiful garden, he only used it when having tea and dinner. Compared to the elves who lived with nature, Louis preferred his own mountain of gold and silver. He clapped his hands to call the elven maids. The young maidens walked in gracefully and kneeled down in front of him. He looked at the light muslin they were wearing that revealed their wonderful body. His eyes flashed with regret but still gave his orders, take care of her majesty during her stay here. You have served her before in the past, so I don't need to tell you how to take care of her. There is no need to be polite, Lord Louis. 
since I gave these maids to you, they are your ladies in waiting. You should not shirk from comfort. I noticed that you came to my city without any maids. Having these elves who are familiar with you look after you should give you a sense of familiarity. The elf queen listened and paused for a moment before saying, since you have said so, then I would be honored. However, I have one more request. Please tell. I am very curious about your city. Can you give me a tour? Of course. For today, please take a rest in the palace. Tomorrow, I will personally accompany you and introduce you to every detail of the city. Louis smiled lightly. He nodded and agreed to the queen's request. It seemed that his methods of managing the city, which was different from other lords, had finally aroused the curiosity of a powerhouse of the world. Chapter 199 The Queen Stays Overnight Although it was impossible to guess her true identity, Louis knew that the elf queen had successfully piqued his interest with her offer. His prior vacillation had now solidified into a clear intention. Although protagonists in novels would always gain benefits in their adventures, reality did not work that way. That kind of bullheaded thinking and behavior was definitely dangerous. Now that he was able to find out the real state of the gods from the elf queen, he understood that he was on the same starting line as the gods, and might even be a few steps ahead of them. If he remained timid and did nothing, then he would probably not be able to raise his courage in this lifetime. You have succeeded in convincing me, your majesty. Louis played with the crystal cup in his hand and raised it to the queen, as a dragon who aspires to be a god, it would be too cowardly of me to hesitate in this situation. But I require a few days' wait in the interest of preparations. Louis ran some calculations silently in his head. Because he had divinity, he could convert faith into divine power. Although the conversion rate was bad and could not reach the level of gods, it was enough for demigod-level combat. It must be known that the power of gods was never expressed in combat but in the incredible miracles that they could create. Their extraordinary powers could do many unimaginable things. For example, the topography could change with just a word. They could also change the rules of the world such that only physical combat could be performed. Louis would have no way of dealing with this since he was not yet a real god. The rules of this world did not allow the emergence of gods yet. Louis secretly calculated based on his accumulation rate of divine power after two months. If he wanted to fill up the godhood in a short period of time, it was an impossible thing to do, but the amount should be enough for him to be able to face off against a demigod. In any case, even if the gods are gradually waking up, they aren't their original selves anymore. Under the situation where everyone is at the demigod level and does not have much divine power, I do not need to fear anything. Although the gods were powerful and the speed at which they converted faith was much faster, they were no longer the same. There would be a limit to their conversion rates as they had already lost most of their believers. In the absence of faith, having a high conversion rate was useless. It was like an advanced car engine without any gasoline to start it up. Louis had been spreading his faith in Dragon City. Although these beliefs were too scattered due to the momentary lack of proper organization, constructing a church would solve this problem in the long run. In terms of the total amount of faith that could be gathered, Louis should have surpassed most of the gods that hadn't awakened yet. The only ones Louis had to stay alert for would be the god of war and goddess of mourning. These two gods had been lucky to have the support of the faith from the people of the theocracy. When facing them, Louis had to be extra careful. That is natural, but how long would it take for you to prepare? The elf queen knew that even if the goddess of night situation was in bad shape, there was still a certain level of preparation necessary to face it. Louis's request was quite reasonable. Half a month should be enough. I wonder what you think about it. Louis calculated the amount of time he needed and gave a clear answer. Half a month? Very well. Since that is the case, then I might bother you to allow me to stay here for half a month. The elf queen pondered and nodded her head. She carefully thought about it. Although traveling back and forth from Dragon City to the Silver Moon Kingdom only required a short amount of time for a demigod like her, she was curious about Dragon City and Louis. Thus, she chose to stay in it for half a month. She wanted to see the city's developments and possibly uncover some of Louis's secrets. For example, where did Louis procure his supplies from? What was Louis's relationship with the five-colored dragon god? These were the things that she truly wanted to know. You're willing to stay in this city? I couldn't ask for more. I think that this event will also be recorded in the history books. I have a palace cathedral here. Although it's not as good as your palace in the Silver Moon Kingdom, I think I can at least meet your needs. Louis's words carried a slight pride. When he previously returned to Earth, he had procured a large number of supplies for the development of Dragon City. 
At the same time, he had also procured goods for his own enjoyment. Louis had been fed up with the scarcity of supplies in San Solio. The food and drinks in this world simply could not compare to earth at all. Because of the backward culture of San Solio, even if he was in a high position, there were things that he could not obtain. You are very polite. Although we elves are fond of pleasure, we aren't like humans. I do not require much in terms of housing. As long as it is as natural and beautiful as your garden, it is enough. The elf queen pursed her lips and smiled. Although she looked like an immortal fairy, she was unlike one at all. She was an elf, and elves also had material needs. That's why she didn't say that she needed anything and only a rough meal was enough. Louis gladly accepted her arrangements. Since that's the case, I'll leave this garden fully in your hands while you live here. Although Louis liked the beautiful garden, he only used it when having tea and dinner. Compared to the elves who lived with nature, Louis preferred his own mountain of gold and silver. He clapped his hands to call the elven maids. The young maidens walked in gracefully and kneeled down in front of him. He looked at the light muslin they were wearing that revealed their wonderful body. His eyes flashed with regret but still gave his orders, take care of her majesty during her stay here. You have served her before in the past, so I don't need to tell you how to take care of her. There is no need to be polite, Lord Louis. Since I gave these maids to you, they are your ladies-in-waiting. You should not shirk from comfort. I noticed that you came to my city without any maids. Having these elves who are familiar with you look after you should give you a sense of familiarity. The elf queen listened and paused for a moment before saying, Since you have said so, then I would be honored. However, I have one more request. Please tell. I am very curious about your city. Can you give me a tour? Of course. For today, please take a rest in the palace. Tomorrow, I will personally accompany you and introduce you to every detail of the city. Louis smiled lightly. He nodded and agreed to the queen's request. It seemed that his methods of managing the city, which was different from other lords, had finally aroused the curiosity of a powerhouse of the world. Chapter 200 The Treacherous World of the Gods Within his lair, Louis transformed back into his titanic dragon form and lay on his mountain of gold. The cold moon hung in the sky outside. And perhaps because the elf queen was present, it seemed to shine with a brighter luster than ever before. The palace at the summit of the city was layered with a thin film of frost. In the hall, Louis squinted his eyes as he rested. He would occasionally look at the female dragon close to his feet. Because Louis had returned to dominate the space, Noella was unable to occupy his bed. But as if she was sleepwalking Noella would close her eyes and then move small steps at intervals until she was able to bury her head in the mountain of gold. The draconic fascination with wealth and shiny things made Louis chuckle a little. No matter how different this female dragon was from an ordinary dragon, she was still unable to resist the temptation of gold coins. But Louis was also affected by these instincts. He also loved these treasures, but he always tried his hardest to not let a dragon's instincts dominate his behavior. As long as Noella didn't try to steal his treasures, he would let her play around as she pleased. Noella could not believe this at all, because dragons would be furious if others touched their treasures, even if it was their partner. But Louis acted as if he was oblivious to her behavior of stealing the bed. The nails on Louis's claws rubbed the long sword that emitted faint holy light. Although it was not the same, it had a similar divinity as the goddess of mourning. Louis had killed the legendary warrior who wielded this sword when he first arrived on this world. What was curious to him was that the weapon in his hand was related to the goddess of mourning. From this, it could be surmised that the goddess of mourning and the god of war were equal in status and indistinguishable from each other. But when they both wake up and return, the theocracy will probably fall apart. The gods would not allow their believers to follow other gods, as a result, they will have to make a choice. This conflict will expand infinitely and would cause the state to collapse. Louis's nails tapped the holy sword. It was unfortunate that it was only a lesser divine weapon and not at all useful to him. He was, after all, a dragon who used his body to fight, and so he did not need a weapon. When the goddess of mourning and the god of war return, I do not know how they will cooperate. With the faith of the people on the line, the two former allies would definitely fight against each other to see who is dominant. What are you saying? Louis was talking to himself in the language from Earth. Unless the, language understanding, spell was used, no one in San Solio could understand it. Noella had never bothered to learn it, so she could not understand at all. Don't be disrespectful now, call me dad. What's wrong? Are you that unwilling? Do you want me to teach you a lesson now? Since the elf queen is just next door, 
why don't I call her to observe? Dad, faced with Louis's threat, Noella did not hesitate between the options of obeying Louis or losing face in front of others, and decisively chose the former. Very good. Tomorrow, I'll ask Lisfer to bring you a roast suckling pig. I will let you use the seasoning I let you taste the last time on a whole roast suckling pig. Louis had plenty of experience in raising dogs. When they obeyed, they needed to be rewarded for subservience to become a reflex action. When Noella heard it, she truly acted like a dog and surprisingly wagged her tail. She raised her head and drooled at the edge of her mouth. A whole roast suckling pig. I can use cumin and barbecue sauce on the entire thing? She harumphed and stared at him with her dragon eyes like a husky. This is a reward for your obedience. Dad. 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 One roast suckling pig is too little. I can't eat my fill. Could I eat, two, two is enough. The queen of calamity, who once terrorized the continent instantly gave up her dignity and wagged her tail happily. Don't talk about those seasonings that can't be bought with gold. You're just a poor dragon, what are you going to exchange it with? Giving you a roast suckling pig to eat is already on account of your contributions to Dragon City. Louis waved his hands coldly and slapped away Noella's claws. This world was close to medieval civilization, but there were no Arabian traders, no importers of silk, spices, and so on. So the high-quality seasoning being more precious than gold was definitely not a lie. In this era where people had to budget just to get access to low-quality salt, Louis pepper, cumin, and other condiments were rare beyond comparison. You. The Queen of Calamity pouted and buried her head in the mountain of gold. She also stopped wagging her tail. Looking at this beautiful female dragon, Louis could not help but stretch over her head and give her a sniff. He could clearly see that Noella was trembling. Noella was quite beautiful, whether in human form or dragon form. He felt that she was a great choice based on his aesthetics, especially in her dragon form, which greatly stimulated his desires. However, Louis had been abstaining from sex these past few days. He had been using his willpower and spirit to convert faith in preparation to venture into the goddess of night's divine kingdom. If he did not need to do so, he would have already eaten this female dragon. This novel is available on Hosted Novel. Noella, let me ask you, are you familiar with the Elf Queen? The Elf Queen? Noella let out a dull voice, I only know that she is a very ancient demigod. She is very famous in the main continent, but very few people have seen her. I only met her once when I sneaked into the Silver Moon Kingdom a thousand years ago before being driven out. Seeing that Noella did not know much about the Elf Queen, he did not ask any more questions. It seemed that all the people in the world underestimated the Queen. And then, Louis suddenly thought about the Silver Moon Goddess. If the gods were still dormant and would begin in the same starting line, then what about the Silver Moon Goddess? Under the effort of the Elf Queen, there were around a million elves in the entire forest of the moon. Except for a few druids, almost all of them believed in the silver moon goddess. The goddess of mourning and god of war are ones to be careful of, but I also cannot let my guard down against the silver moon goddess. She, in fact, seems to be the more dangerous one. Louis fell into deep thought. The world of gods is really full of treachery. I can't have any oversights. 